All right. Well, uh, let me welcome you guys to the next installment here of our Amazon Fast Track Coaching. Uh, of course, the theme of this entire program is to go on this journey get together that as my business grows, yours will grow. You get to basically look over my shoulder. And every month, as you guys know, I am sharing the real world things that we're doing, the tactics that are uh, causing breakthroughs for us in our business. The idea here is that you kind of parrot what I'm doing within your Amazon business so that you attain all, you know, equal success and a growth curve that frankly looks more like the one on the right, right? It's never going to be a straight line up. There's going to be bumps in a road, but as long as the general direction is headed upwards, <clears throat> that's all we can ask for <laughs> right in business. So let me just briefly jam through this. As you guys know, I'm a big believer in certain principles in this Amazon business. Our simple business plan is to make $10,000 a month per product. That's our benchmark. The math is simple. To make $100,000 a month, uh, we need 10 products. Uh, our goal is a 40% margin. So with 10 products, bringing in 100K a month gross, we're able to net uh, under our business plan $40,000 a month. We use the 80-20 principle throughout our business and the 80-20 and, and principle um, as it applies to our product mix is we want to be releasing enough products uh, such that the 80-20 rule kicks in, i.e. we're going to end up with a collection, a smaller collection of Grand Slam home runs that are generating the lion's shares of our sales that we can scale massively and expand from there. You're going to have the bulk in the middle that that are going to be like the workhorses, but they're more sort of pass, uh, sort, more sort of passive income earners, and they're going to have one or two dogs on the other side of the curve. We also have this belief that rather than sit and twiddle our thumbs and hope that Jeff Bezos rains rankings down upon us, instead we're going to be more proactive, and we call it buy Amazon rank. This is an idea that I first learned uh, and and heard put forth by Jason. Uh, Fladlin and Wilson Matos. And the theory being this, if Amazon offered you the top spot, the number one, two or three ranking for your product, and they said, write us a check right now for $30,000, you'll have rank number one, two or three, would you do it? And to a man, pretty much everyone says, yeah, I'd do it in a second. Well then, theoretically, why wouldn't we give away $30,000 worth of products to buy that same rank. Of course, we don't want to, we don't need to, but that's the theory. And the end game is to own a collection of 80-20 breakout home runs as well as passive income earners. Now, conversion rate is king, everything else are queens. So we know not only from my research of Amazon A9, uh, I know more about that as far as I know than anybody else out there because I've spent more time in geek mode actually trying to find out what Amazon wants from us. And we know that um, that Amazon is obsessed by conversion rate. Why? It's pretty simple. Because Amazon's goal, you know, A9 can all be summed up as this. Amazon wants more sales per visitor. And it makes sense. If they can tweak, you know, if they can take all the existing traffic they have now, not even increase it, just the existing massive flow of traffic coming into Amazon, and they can just up the sales per visitor just incrementally, you can imagine what that that impact is throughout uh, their entire company financials. If they can increase it um, bit by bit, month after month, year after year, you get this magnified impact. So they're obsessed by it. That's why we need to be obsessed by it because it is meeting the number one goal. So if you can get better at monitoring and increasing your conversion rate, Amazon, over time, absolutely, we've proven this, they will reward you with higher and higher rankings. Now, by the way, uh, sort of parenthetically, um, A9 is wired such that when somebody types in a search, let's say they're looking for, I don't know, Harry Potter, uh, extra small uh, boxer brief. Okay, if somebody types that in, how does Amazon know what to display? Well, there's a number of factors, but one is actual conversion rate as well as predicted conversion rate. Well, what is a predicted conversion rate? It's well, okay, think about it. All things being equal, is somebody more likely to buy an expensive item or a cheaper item, the cheaper item? So we know that one factor that also holds great sway in your rankings is price. 
And so again, this is stuff that we've proven it in our own business. We've seen that, uh, that, that some price drops, you don't have to go nuts with it, but some price drops, if you have an already good conversion rate, will tend to almost always increase your ranking as well. So anyway, uh, we are uh, full speed pedal to the metal. We will most likely hit 400,000 a month, I predict by November. And anyway, uh, that's sort of a quick kind of overview of the goal of this program and the journey that, that you're going to see. And again, as we create our breakthroughs, our tactics, our methods, we'll be sharing these month after month, as you guys know, in the Fast Track Coaching. So um, how'd you guys do with the 100-day challenge? I hope you guys actually did it. Uh, I can't tell you how many emails that I had, by the way. Um, Emily showed me several where you guys said, hey, will you do another 100-day challenge for us? It was really very beneficial to help us focus. And so, sure, let's do it. I love the idea. So let's commence with our next 100-day challenge, what we are calling our swing into summer. So it's going to start... Um, today, which is April 21st at the time of this recording, and mark your calendar, the 100-day challenge, the second 100-day challenge of 2015 is going to end July 28th. If you use Google Calendar like I do, make that whole day red because you know that that is your deadline date, and it's a deadline date for what? Okay, following this webinar today, you're going to write down simply five top Amazon goals that no matter what, come hell or high water, no matter how busy you get, no matter how distracting, you know, summertime vacations are, you are going to hit those five goals, no matter what, no excuses by July 28th. Then every day, we're going to pick one of those five goals, just one, and you're going to go to determine what is an 80-20 action, i.e. what is one simple thing I can do that will, that will generate massive results. So a massive leverage type of task. And you're going to work on that goal that day to take massive action to hitting it within this 100-day sprint. So um, if you're up for the challenge, I think there's tremendous benefit in doing this as a group. Uh, I, will, I will keep nagging you and reminding you <laughs> of the sort of countdown to our second 100 days. And so and, and I just want to say, um, you know, really congratulations and super job for those of you that wrote to me and said that you hit hit those five goals that you set at the start of 2015. Awesome job. Now, as crazy as this sounds, we have to start thinking about placing our Christmas inventory orders pretty soon. So here's what I recommend you do now while it's fresh in our minds. Number one, start thinking about your holiday plan. What inventory do you want to have in stock? What is your deadline date to have it in stock? It seems that the holiday buying season keeps happening earlier and earlier. So here's what I recommend. On your Google Calendar, on August 1st, and I would I would make the argument that even before August 1st, so I would say August 1st at the latest, set an alert that that is the day you need to place your larger size Christmas inventory orders, especially if you're shipping by ocean. Don't make the same mistake that we made last year. I actually ordered in, in, in August. Uh, because this one particular factory in China was so busy, there was a bit of a delay in getting that order done. Then there was a delay in getting the damn thing picked up and loaded onto the ocean liner. And then, of course, there was a labor dispute on the West Coast. So, <laughs> so we got 5,000 units about a week after the freaking holidays. So, um, hey, I'm slow, but when I get it, I get it. So I'm going to learn my lesson this year and really be very aggressive in ordering early just before the big tipping point in these factories, you know, when they become busy. And by the way, you know, if you're brand new to this game, they get super busy from September onward and stuff just happens. So you don't want to get caught short. No inventory equals no money. So August 1st, pop that date on your calendar. Now, we've got some absolutely killer stuff for you. Uh, on this webinar. Number one, something that I think is uh, a breakthrough. It's a tweak, but but it's a tweak that's a breakthrough nonetheless. We call it the nibble launch tactic. And I pose the question that perhaps we've been doing it wrong. Well, not wrong. Perhaps we've been doing it slightly wrong and there's an easier way to rank our products. So for the first time, I'm going to be revealing our new approach to ranking 
are products that involves the most obvious keywords uh, that are hidden within long tail keywords and then using my proprietary link rotator that I'll talk about. Street Smart Amazon Tactics with James Jones. He's going to cover two things, and I have seen his slides, and I'm so excited. You know, James is uh, one of the most popular speakers that we have on the Fast Track webinars. He's back. Upon my request, he's going to talk about two things. Number one, how to evaluate a product niche before you invest in inventory so you know if it's going to be a winner or not. And second, what to do when your product isn't selling. He actually has a system of what to go through and how to make course corrections. Very useful stuff. Uh, now, due to request, I have kicked off what we're, what we're calling the Rainmaker series. These are low and no cost Amazon marketing tactics that you can do on your weekly Rainmaker days. So I'll be teaching you what I call the bell cow tactic. You'll love this because it costs next to nothing. It can yield really huge results, high visibility. We're going to talk about managed by stats. And now imagine hiring your own full-time CFO for your Amazon business so that you know exactly what your numbers are, what your sales per ASIN are, what your profit per ASIN is, so that you had all your customer records, so that you are able to get their real email addresses. Imagine being able to access a tool like that. Well, uh, I've been talking to the developer of managed by stats. I'm blown away by what they're doing. And even though we actually do have two well, we have one CFO and one full-time bookkeeper. I'm still using this tool, and I'll tell you why. But if you don't have a CFO or a bookkeeper, and you've just kind of been winging it, this is a must-have. Especially, it's it's like it's literally so cheap that I can't believe he's charging what he's charging. <laughs> okay, uh, but uh, we have him on the line with us today, and I'm going to be covering things, and uh, he'll be available for um, for some questions after my presentation of how we're using Managed by Stats. Hijacker defense system, you're going to find out exactly our system for getting rid of hijackers. You're going to get our cease and desist email sequence that, uh, as far as I know, well, um, I've tweaked this over uh, over the past year and a half, and it, it rocks. It, it gets rid of our hijackers 90 plus percent of the time. We give them, well, I, I'll just leave it for the training section. I think you're going to really love it. And we have uh, three scenarios of hijacking, and I'm going to walk through exactly how we deal with them. The word for word emails that we send either to the hijacker or to seller central or seller performance, you're going to find this extremely valuable. And then lastly, kind of as a bonus is what I call the copyright defense system. So without uh, further delay, let's get to the good stuff. Okay. Module number one, what I'm calling the nibble launch um, method or tactic now, why is it called the nibble launch tactic? Because we're basically going to be nibbling around the edges of the most valuable main keyword. And in the process, by incorporating the main keyword, it's like the tide that rises all ships. Let me explain. Imagine if there was a new way to launch a product that would, first of all, get you ranked for many, many easy to rank for keywords in a relatively short period of time, okay? So you're ranking for those. So all of a sudden sales are kicking in while simultaneously getting ranked for the main money keyword. That's what you're gonna be learning. And I'm gonna walk you through exactly how we have wired this up. So the big picture is the way that we used to do Amazon product launches was we'd use the ASM Ranker link, right? You guys, if you guys bought through uh, Jason Fladlin, you guys all got that as a bonus. Hope to God that you have installed that already and are using it. Uh, if not, urgently, you need to begin using the ASM Ranker link. It is, it is, um, it, it throws an extra juice that 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 makes it preferable to uh, to a super URL. Um, but uh, well, I'll talk about the super URL, how we use that, and the ASM Ranker link here as we progress. Let's let's just talk high concept for right now. So. We're using the ASM Ranker link, and we're trying to rank our product for the most obvious main keywords, either the number one most obvious keyword or maybe like the top three most obvious, aka most competitive keywords there are that get all the traffic. But I believe that I've discovered a better way, and it involves um, a little trick that entails long tail keywords. So let's learn it. So first of all, should we go after the main money keyword first? when launching a new Amazon product. 
I used to believe, hell yeah, right? <laughs> so the way we used to do it is we'd use the ASM ranker link and, um, and, and we would try to rank for the most, most obvious keyword. Now, first thing to kind of lock in place in your mind, the most obvious main keyword is typically a short keyword, typically a two word keyword, such as tea kettle. Okay. Maybe even a one word. Okay. Why? Well, it just makes sense. The, the average kind of typical American, they're not going to do these. Well, with rare exception, they're not going to do, you know, three, four, five word searches on Amazon. And if they are, then they're probably, uh, you know, great buyers, but they're so kind of thinly searched. It doesn't make sense to rank for, for kind of the freak exception person that you might get like, you know, one search a month for. But on the other extreme are the, let's call it ma and pa kettle Amazon users that look, if they want a tea kettle, most of them will just simply type in tea kettle. They probably won't type in, um, you know, highest rated tea kettle that whistles, right? So that's why usually the most valuable keywords tend to be the shortest because that's how real consumers search for stuff on Amazon. But I believe I've discovered a better way. Here's a gist of it. You, we will target easy to rank for long tail keywords that incorporate within it our main keyword. So uh, this is typically, you know, this is our proven Amazon launch funnel. Uh, it's now been so copied <laughs> that, that I guess I can only take that as a compliment. But the gist of it is, right, we're going to do a one, two, three dollar giveaway. Okay, we're going to push all that traffic through through an ASM ranker link. Now, let me just as an aside. When you're first launching a product, you may not be able to use the ASM ranker link. Why? Because you can only use it once that product has cracked the top 20 pages of Amazon. And it may, might only take a couple sales for that to happen. But in, but like always, we start off using the James Jones super URL. Uh, James Jones, who's on this webinar, he actually invented the super URL. I mean, the guy's a genius. Um, but, and so, so start off with the super URL and either continue using it or, or do what I do. I switch it up for the ASM ranker link for some extra juice. And, um, you know, this method works, you know, absolutely reliably and brilliantly, and it's ranked all of our products. Okay. It also causes a high conversion rate to your listing. It moves your product up the ranks and it tells Amazon that when people search for say tea kettle, that they tend to land on your listing and buy your product. Right. But something that I never revealed in this process was this. I had a proprietary link rotator tool that I had built and have been using since last summer. Okay. What this link rotator allowed us to do was plug in two, three, four, five, six, whatever, different ASM ranker or super URLs so that we could evenly rotate and target multiple money keywords simultaneously. So we would rotate the links such that Amazon thought I was getting all these buys from different keywords, okay? It probably also looks more natural too to Amazon. So uh, the screenshot in the upper right is our thank you page. So after somebody opts in back here, right? It says, get your coupon code. Then uh, this, this uh, sort of opt-in form pops up as an overlay over that web page and asks for their, for their email address. It redirects them to this page, okay? Now, see that green button right there? That's where I would use the link rotator. So person number one clicks on the button and it appends the keyword tea kettle to the link, just like in the, in the uh, lower screenshot. Then person number two clicks on the green button and it appends best tea kettle to that link. And then person number three clicks on it and it appends black tea kettle. And then it just kind of starts over again. So it'd be even amounts of traffic, assuming that they buy and actually check out. So you're ranking for several keywords all at once. Pretty cool trick. Now I'm going somewhere with this guy. So just kind of hang in, you know, hang on. 
Let me present to you then the nibble strategy. So I have to kind of present the theory here, and I think you'll be quite excited. If you try to rank for a three-word keyword term using the ASM Ranker, will that automatically help you rank for a two-word term inside of the three-word long tail? So like in other words, if we, if we try to rank for black tea kettle, does Amazon A9 give us credit for tea kettle also? So if we put our focus on ranking for the longer tail keyword that contains the short keyword within it, will we rank for both? And the answer is, bum, 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 absolutely yes. Well, you guys probably know why, right? When you're setting up your listings in the search fields uh, in the back end of Seller Central, you don't need to comma separate. You know that it will read uh, the individual words. It's the same concept here. Amazon A9 will display your listing for all of those individual words and combinations of those. So tea kettle, tea kettle, black tea kettle, etc. So by nibbling around the edges, of the main keyword by targeting long tail keywords that incorporate the main keyword, it's the tie that rises all ships, okay? So <laughs> lots of benefit for this. So which keyword do you think is easier for us to rank for for launching a new product? Tea kettle that has 1.7 million searches, according to Merchant Words, or black tea kettle that has 15,000 searches? Clearly, vastly easier to rank for black tea kettle, but, the great news is as long as the long tail keyword, like the longer phrase term, incorporates the main money keyword, you ultimately rank for both. How ninja is that? Now, what if we combined the idea of this keyword incorporation, kind of wrapping the money keyword around a longer tail keyword? What if we combine that with the use of of a link rotator. And that's exactly what we've been doing. So picture a link rotator that is now focused on five long tail keywords, but each of those long tails incorporate the short tail. Okay. So visitor number one, black tea kettle. Visitor number two, stainless steel tea kettle. Number three, best electric tea kettle, ceramic tea kettle, Japanese tea kettle, and, and it rotates. So now we're ranking for, for the you know, what we call the laydowns, that's a uh, term we use in America, <laughs> you know, the low hanging fruit, but it's also chipping away, hammering home at the main, what we call the anchor, main anchor keyword, which is tea kettle. Okay. So these are the steps that we're now using with our nibble launch strategy. And, you know, this is a simple concept. And the reason I sort of had to uh, build it up and explain the theory and the pieces is because I believe that, you know, there are differences that whisper and there are differences that scream. These three steps are differences that scream. So if you don't do this right, eh, you won't get that much of a result. But I think if you do it in the way that we have this wired, uh, you're really going to love this. And by the way, this is one of those things. Do not share this with your mastermind group. Don't share this with people that are not part of Fast Track. Why would you give up that advantage? You know, we always want to be the guy that has the greatest, latest, trick that we can share with our, you know, compatriot who's part of Amazon, but it's, you know, you're just hurting yourself because then that next person wants to, you know, be the cool person and they share it in their mastermind group. And then like you see now, you see several online services literally, um, charging now for what I gave you guys, you know, um, you know, all the template files for already last fall. So keep this amongst ourselves. Okay. Step one. I'm just going to go through my workflow. You, you can, you can, um, you know, if, if, if you're very comfortable with the keyword research, you can probably skip step number one, but here's how I do it. I'm using James Harbaugh's um, keyword inspector tool. Uh, this is a tool um, that basically allows me to paste in the top three or four ASINs for the top rank people, um, you know, for the same products that I want to rank for, right? And it, and it yanks out their most valuable keywords, shows what they're ranking for. Because I just want, I just want to verify that 
I am indeed correct in my assumption that my main money keyword is the main money keyword that I'm assuming that it is. Sometimes I'm, I'm actually wrong. And sometimes it's, it's, it's a more kind of, uh, you know, generic, uh, keyword. So I find that this is for the money. It only cost me probably three or four bucks to run those reports. Well worth it. I mean, considering that I'm spending several thousand on a product launch and, and, and an inventory and things like this. So we verify the main money keyword. Then I go to merchant words. Now merchant words, the downfall of merchant words is whatever keyword you type, uh, you, you paste in is, is, is you, you basically put the blinders on the eyes of merchant words and it'll feed back all the keywords related to that root keyword. So like in other words, the benefit of James Harbaugh's tool is if you put in tea kettle, it'll show you maybe other great keywords that don't even contain the word tea kettle in them at all. If you put in the word tea kettle in the merchant words, it will only bring back to you keywords that contain the phrase tea kettle in it. Hope that makes sense. But that's perfect for what we're going to do now. So merchant words, I put in tea kettle. Here, I'll show you. Let me uh, see if I even... Uh, hold on a second. Let me just uh, pause my screen here. And open up merchant words for you real quick. I wasn't going to do this live, but I might as well just show this to you real quick. Okay. So if we type in T kettle into the search thing here, I always sort highest to lowest. Uh, this is how I compile my list of longer tail keywords that incorporate the main keyword phrase here, tea kettle. And you see here, it's just feeding back all these variations of blah, 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 tea kettle. So tea kettle stainless steel, tea kettle red, if yours is red, iron tea kettle, whistle tea kettle. Now, truthfully, I tend to, and again, there is no rule of thumb for this, but 15,000 and lower is what I would call the low hanging fruit. Not always, not always. So don't write me an email and say, Ben, I targeted a 15,000 search phrase and I'm not ranking for it. Okay. Well, you know, as a general rule of thumb, that's a good starting point. You know, 5,000, 10,000 right in this range are great long tail keywords. So like best electric tea kettle that absolutely would be on my list. I would rank for that because it incorporates my main keyword here, tea kettle, but it actually isn't very highly searched, but I think it's a great keyword as well. The word best shows buyer intent doesn't it? Cute tea kettle. I might use that one. 8,000 searches. Also, don't write me a letter and say, Ben, how do they get their data from merchant words? This is just a best guess. You know, even Google Keyword Planner is a best guess. Let's see. Okay, here's another uh, maybe good one. 7,000 searches, traditional tea kettle, right? So whatever you put into merchant words, it will almost like by default contain the main keyword, but also display longer tail keywords that we can wrap within it. Hope that makes sense. All right. Now, so I come up with my list of five. Why five? Well, that's, that's just what I do. If you want to do more, less, that's fine. But I do five long tail derivatives of the main keyword search volume under 15,000 a month. And then I plug them into my link rotator. Okay, The link rotator URL is used on the thank you page buy button so that it evenly rotates the five long tail keywords during my uh, giveaway launch. And so, um, yeah, so that's what it does. So it ranks me for these long, longer tail keywords. I start getting sales sooner. And it chips away at helping me rank for the main money keyword. Because think about it, you're getting all this keyword diversity, but the one similarity between all those five long tail keywords is that run one root keyword that we that we really want to rank for. And uh, anyway, so this is exactly what we're doing now with all of our new product launches. We start on long tail and those long tails incorporate our short tail. All right. This way we make money along the way on our march towards ranking for the real keyword that we want, which is the short phrase. All right. Now, here is a surprise for you guys. <laughs> I've decided to give you all free access to my proprietary Amazon link rotator tool. 
I hate complexity, as you guys know. I'm a, I'm a big believer in the 80-20 rule. So this is a very focused, super fast loading link rotator. It doesn't have lots of bells and whistles. It's very, very focused. But just like a good shot of espresso, it does the job. Okay. So I have some rules, though, for this in sharing this. More and more, my content seems to be being kind of leaked out there, uh, you know, into the general Amazon community. Guys, yeah, I, I really have no way to enforce this, uh, but just, just please give me your word that this is for your use only. No sharing. I only want, um, I'm only allowing one install per Amazon Fast Track member. And my only very strict rule with this is only active current Amazon Fast Trackers can use my link rotator. If someone were to leave Fast Track, they are no longer allowed or authorized to use this tool because we want to keep this thing exclusive within a family. Deal? So if you agree to those terms, and only if you agree to those terms, when we post this replay, you will find the download um, available in the members area for the link rotator tool, along with instructions. I also don't want to become your unpaid tech support. <laughs> so uh, let me show you uh, some of the instructions here briefly so you can see what's going on here. Okay. So when you install this initially, everyone has the same username and password. Okay. And, you know, um, if, if these instructions are really beyond you, not to worry, you're going to post this job on Elance. You're not going to email me, right? Because I'm busy. <laughs> you're going to do what I do. Um, I hand this off to somebody who's a freelancer. I even wrote the freaking uh, um, um, Elance job for you. Okay. And you'll literally just give them this, these instructions. You'll give them the file that you'll find in the download area. And it's that simple. Now, I just want to go over a couple things related to this link rotator. Let me just give you a quick demo of how the link rotator works so you're clear. Um, okay, so let me just show you something real quick. This is, again, this is just this is just just for demo purposes. This is where this demo has been installed. Look at the URL. So it'd be yourdomain.com forward slash rotator, forward slash rotator.php. Now, what link do you use on the thank you page? Okay, pay attention. You just get rid of this part. And that's the link. That's the link that you use. So again, this is where you access your dashboard. And I put this right here. So the dashboard is yourdomain.com forward slash rotator.php. Okay. Actually, hold on a second. I lied. <laughs> there we go. And here's where you log in. So um, once your, your freelancer installs this for you, you're going to adhere to this to log in. And this is everyone's going to start off with the same username and password, just so uh, just so there was no customer support that I had to deal with, because just me and my wife, and and I'm running this Amazon Fast Track part time, full time. I'm doing my Amazon business, um, and here's where we're going to access your dashboard once you log in. Okay. Now, here's what I suggest you do. See this folder here called Rotator. You can name this whatever you want, and it will not screw anything up. So, so here's what I would do if I were you. Say. I don't want people to see this link. I'd rather them see something like this. Happinessoutreachproject.com forward slash tea kettle or egg timer or whatever the case may be. So in that case, you just add rotator.php to access your dashboard. And that just helps make your link a little prettier if you want to be anal. Uh, be, I mean, frankly, um, somebody who's like a PHP programmer most likely will not land on your thank you page and, and go, oh, this is interesting. No, you're going to get real consumers that, that frankly don't give a crap. They're just, they want the, the one or two or three dollar buy, right? Okay. So um, this is literally brain dead simple. You take your ASM ranker link or your super URL if you're using James Jones tool 
if your uh, product isn't in the top 20. And you just paste the links right here. So these links don't actually work. This is, I just made these up, but it would rotate in this example, black tea kettle, stainless steel tea kettle. So you literally can add as many URLs as you want. We can go google.com. We can go yahoo.com. Click save changes. Okay. And it's that simple. All right. Super, super simple. Uh, my number one criteria was it must have mega fast load speed. That's why it's not WordPress based. That's why it's not a plugin. It's just super lightning scorching fast script um, that uh, that works very well for us. So there you go. Hope you guys enjoy that. Um, I just wanted to share one quick thing, how to change the password. This is on the instructions. Again, if you're not technical, um, just have your freelancer do it. You're going to access the login.php file. And I know this is quirky, but whatever you want your password to be, let's say you want your password to be Ben is cool. Put your password into this tool, which is an MD5 hash generator and click generate. And this is what you'll actually paste into the login.php file because it'll basically hide the true identity of your password from prying eyes. Okay. So um, the full instructions are uh, in with the download. And uh, if, if, if how to change your password is sort of beyond you, again, just have the coder do it for you. They'll be able to knock it out literally in five minutes for you. All right. All right. Oh, I hate hate the geeky stuff, but, uh, you know, what are you going to do? You know, some sort of, you know, modicum is necessary for it. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, ask away. Um, wow. We got lots of thank yous. No problem. Awesome. Boy, you guys seem pumped by this. Uh, so Brian Lynn, Hey, what's up, Brian? Hey, I'm going to see you at uh, traffic intensive. Awesome. Uh, he says, should we start with super URL? for the link rotator and then switch to the ASM ranker link. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Jim says the value keeps piling on. Thank you, Ben. This is awesome. Hey, awesome. Thanks, Jim. You know, and uh, thanks for your, uh, frankly, thanks for all of your continued loyalty. I mean, you guys are like <laughs> so supportive of, of, of these wild ideas that we test and come up with. So um, thank you. Uh, Matthew is, is, uh, has read something in the Facebook group saying that giveaways don't work. Uh, Matthew, I've been hearing that since one year ago. <laughs> uh, Elizabeth says, awesome, Ben. Thank you. Uh, Sean and Kelly say, we can only do one product at a time. This would be great for my 51% off coupons. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. So I said one install. I just, uh, sorry, let me just clarify one install per domain. So yeah, you have a good point. So for example, if your domain is, um, abctkettles.com, you could install this script, you know, 10 different times if you wanted to, so that you could have different, um, URLs that you used. So, 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 so like in other words, if you have, if you have multiple product lines, yes, that's no problem. I just meant one install per domain. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, Brian, there is not. Uh, a lot of people are saying, awesome, freaking awesome, cool. Uh, all right. I'm only going to uh, address the questions sort of related to this. Okay. Robert says, where can I get support for the ASM Ranker tool? That'd be through Rapid Crush. Uh, Beverly, uh, I think I just answered that question. Yeah, you can install the script on one domain, but you can do it multiple times. That way you have, have, have a different folder for each product. Yeah, I have no problem with that. And uh, sorry that I... Uh... Hey, Carl, what's up? Hope you're doing well. 
All right, so let's let's move on. We have a bunch to cover today here. Um, let me unmute uh, James Jones. Are you there? Why don't you go ahead and unmute yourself? Hey Ben, man, hey. that that nibble launch thing, man, that's great. Oh, I cool. I love the way you explain that. It's, I mean, that's that's really cool. Awesome, awesome. Hey, can you just um um increase your volume, uh, if at all possible, or or maybe put the mic a bit closer? See if I can. Okay, how about this? Is any better? better? That is better. Thank you. All right, well, that was James that we just heard from. Um, he's going to teach a segment here that I call Street Smart Amazon Tactics with James Jones. James, how do you like that title? That's a great title, man. I'm <laughs> glad you came up with that. <laughs> uh, James, you guys all know, is the founder of an awesome tool that, uh, that, that we endorse and recommend that you guys pick up called Amazon Power Pack. And um, you're going to learn how to evaluate a product niche before you dive into it and what to do when your product isn't selling. So uh, let me introduce you to James Jones. He is, as I said earlier, the guy who invented the super URL, which is a brilliant concept. Uh, he's a guy behind Azon Power Pack. And if you've been hanging around the ASM Masters you know, forum um, over the past several months, you see the people rave about it. And, uh, and many of our Amazon Fast Trackers also have nothing but great things to say about it. It's, it's a suite of different tools that basically enable you to evaluate um, Amazon products, to track them, to launch your Amazon business. And James has a really deep understanding of how Amazon ranks things and the algorithms. So anyway, he was very popular the last time we had him on. I tapped him and asked him to teach us again. So with that, I'd like to introduce you to James Jones. Well, thank you, Ben. I really appreciate that. And you can go ahead and go on to the next slide now because I'm going to dive right into this thing. I've got just a tiny bit of history, but I think it's going to be something that you're going to want to hear about. Um, this was my mentor, Gary Halbert. And I met Gary in 1989. He's arguably the greatest marketer who ever lived. Uh, Gary passed away in 2007, but in his prime, he was selling $20,000 worth per day of a one-page info product. And that was in 1973 when $20,000 a day was a lot of money, you know? <laughs> of course, I guess $20,000 a day is still a lot of money. Back then, it was even more. All right, next slide, please. So one of the things Gary said to me, Gary said, what business are you in? So remember, this is 1989. This is way before the Internet, or at least several years before the Internet. Never even heard of the Internet before. Back then... I was selling, you can go to the next slide, I was selling info products and computer supplies. Basically, I was selling whatever I could make some money on. Um, and this really is the business model that you would be doing back in those days, back before the Internet, before Amazon. What we were doing is we were selling products from magazine ads, from the back of magazine ads in the classified sections, and also through mailing lists. But it's really it's the same concept. I mean, just find a passionate or hungry market market and then sell them something related to that market. And that's what we do now with Amazon. Only Amazon makes it so much easier. As Ben was talking about before, Amazon has consolidated all these hungry, passionate buyers into one place. I mean, it's like I mean, it's like the watering hole, right? We just go there and just just figure out where the markets are and then just start picking at them. It's the greatest business ever. But Gary asked me that question. You can go on to the next slide, Ben. Um, Gary asked me that question. What business are you in? That is a really important question to answer because once you, once you know what business you're really in, then that's going to really open it up to, to just the, the entire world to you. I said, uh, first off, I said I'm in the uh, computer supply business, and Gary said, no, not really because don't you sell info products too, and do you really care what you sell? No, not really. Okay, I'm in the magazine ad business. He says, no, nah, magazine ads, that's just a medium for getting your word out. I said, what about I'm in the mail order business? He, nah, again, that's just a medium. And he said, you're not in the direct response marketing business either. He said, and go on to the next slide, Ben. He said, you're in the arithmetic business. The arithmetic business is the greatest business known to man because you can identify passionate, hungry markets you can find someone else who is already reaching these markets. You can reverse engineer their business, 
and know if it's going to be profitable before you invest any money in product development or marketing. So you can know if you'll have a winner before you even get started. Okay, next slide, please. The old way, back in my day when we were doing magazine ads, we'd have to come up with a product idea. So we'd find a market that looked profitable. We'd come up with a product idea, we'd put together the product, we'd place ads in magazines, and then we'd wait, and we'd wait, and we'd wait. Any idea what the lead time is on a magazine ad? A weekly magazine ad, the lead time is six weeks, and a monthly ad was three to six months. So the ad did not even appear in the magazine for as long as, as three months after we placed it. So we just sat around and have to wait. And then we just fulfill the orders and then evaluate the results. It took a lot of time. Today, the next slide, Ben. Today, we can reverse engineer someone else's business and gather that same intelligence in about 20 minutes that a few years ago took months. All right, let's go on to the next slide, Ben. And this is my example here. And I just pulled this up. As an example, because I love this product, by the way, I actually use this product. It's an awesome, awesome product. Um, it's probably a little too saturated now. A lot of people selling this product, uh, but it's the spiral slicer. And if you look down at the bottom, you see that it, when I took this screenshot, and this has been a few weeks ago, I took this screenshot. It was ranked at 116 in uh, kitchen and dining, which is a pretty good ranking. It's selling uh, approximately 150 units a day. Grossing about two uh, $2,241 per day. So next slide, please. If you go to Alibaba and do a search for a spiral slicer, you're going to come up with tons of them. And here's one example. This one, the price is between $1 and $3, depending on your, your minimum order quantity. And here they're saying the minimum order quantity is 5,000 pieces, which is basically just a suggestion. You can negotiate with people. But... Don't worry about that for now. Just know that if you order enough quantity, you can get these for as little as a dollar. Okay, next slide, please. But we just want to test this market out. We don't want to go whole hog right now. So instead of going to Alibaba, let's go to AliExpress. And AliExpress is sort of a sister site to Alibaba that has two advantages. Number one, they have extremely low minimum order quantities, as low as one unit. Most of them, in fact, you can just order one unit, and they have extremely fast shipping. So here, if I did a search for a spiral slicer, you can kind of see, uh, if you can see that, it says there are 4,274 results. So those are the people selling spiral slicer, the companies selling the spiral slicer on AliExpress. Uh, next slide, please. So here's one that I found where you can buy the spiral slicer for $5.55 each. Yeah, that's a lot more than paying a dollar, but we're just doing a product test. Okay, so you get get the item for five dollars and fifty five cents. You can see that we can get it in between two and seven days. It is free shipping. They're using um, they're probably using the e packet shipping, which is a new service that's a cooperation between China and the U.S. Postal Service. Um, but anyway, you can get it in two to seven days. You can buy one unit only if you'd like for five dollars and fifty five cents and so what I would do with this market is I would buy fifty units as a test twenty five fifty units as a test uh, and that's going to cost you what two hundred fifty dollars at the most to get those those items in and then next slide please then we're going to look at the FBA profit calculator we're going to see number one what is our break-even point so the FBA profit calculator is a calculator that Amazon has. I don't know if Ben's talked about this before, but if you just go to Google and type in Amazon FBA calculator, then it'll bring it up and you can start um, entering some numbers and figuring out what your profit margins are. All right, so in this case, um, and you basically you, you enter in the ASIN of the product that you're looking to sell, someone, else, someone else's product, all right, in this case, it's the premium spiral slicer, the same one I just showed you. Um, and down at the bottom of the screen, you'll see under product cost, Amazon has that labeled as prep service, but we don't really have any prep service to put in there. So I just enter the item cost there because that's just a good place to put it. And then I'm going to, I entered several different prices to, to arrive at my break even. So my break even is basically $9.99. 
So if I sell this item for $9.99, that's my break-even point. Okay, and let's go to the next slide. So again, I can, just to, to remind you, I can get this item in quantity for between $1 and $3. Okay, but right now we're just doing this test. And so I don't really care how much I paid for the product. I just want to break even on it. So I'm going to sell it for $9.99 to start. All right, next slide, please. And again, I'm getting it getting the items quickly so I can get that product out there for a quick test in really about two weeks or less. All right, next slide. All right, now, if I determine this product is successful and I go back out and then source a, uh, a higher quantity of the item from Alibaba, then I know I can get my product for $3. And so I've entered $3 as the, the prep service. So that's $3 for the item. The price is the same, and now my per unit profit is $2.55 each. All right, and let's go to the next slide. Okay, and um, here's the math on that. I'm sorry. Want, I think yeah. I'm missing a, a, a slide here. Um, is it, let's see. Let there me go we back go. to one. Yep. Uh, nope, uh, it's the one before that one, I believe. The one at the bottom that says 10000 per month or yep, the one that you. says 30000 per month? 10000 Okay, there we go. Okay, so we're back on a 10,000 per month screen. Sorry. Okay, sorry. I'm following my slide. I'm following yours. Okay. Um, so that's here's the math. If you're selling 150 units a day, which is what we saw the prior product was selling, um, and at a price of $9.99, there's your product cost, your shipping cost that we got from the FBA calculator, then you can see that you're going to make a profit of $337.50 per day, which is $10,000 per month. Now, that is if you're selling 150 a day at that $9.99 price. Now, go to the next slide. Let's say we raise the price because the product that we were looking at was actually selling for $14.94. If we sell it and match that price, then our same number of sales, we're going to do $30,000 per month. So that's how much the current listing is doing out there, $30,420 per month in profit. All right, next slide. So aren't you glad you're in the arithmetic business? You can basically go out and just reverse engineer in just a few minutes anyone else's business. Now, next slide, please, Ben. You're probably wondering how to get an estimate of sales per day, and it's just an estimate. You know, there's, I call this a thumbish estimate just from talking to other people, and this is really a, a conservative estimate of the number of sales, but you can copy this down. I'm sure Ben will give you the slides to this just to, uh, to have something to go by. But sort of like the search engine numbers, just estimates. Okay, uh, next slide, please. So what if you're looking at an item, like this is the spiral slicer, and we're on page four of the search results here. So this one is selling, uh, bestseller rank is 9,398. So what if you're looking at a product like this? How do you tell how many sales this one is making? Because it's, it's, it's way off the chart. Well, there's actually a site that will kind of, again, a little thumbish estimate, but it will tell you how many units this is selling. Uh, next slide. It's called Camel, Camel, Camel. And I don't know, Ben, have you talked about Camel, Camel, Camel at all? Um, just very briefly, but, it, okay. but Camel, Camel, Camel is awesome, isn't it? Yeah, this, I mean, one of the best things about Camel, Camel, Camel is just going and looking. You can see the sales rank. Um, you can see the, the sales rank per a certain number of units from um, Camel, Camel, Camel. So go to the next slide, and I'll show you what I mean. Um, the slide with all the little red arrows. All right, so I entered in the ASIM for this item, and then I change over to the tab that says sales rank. Now, this sales rank is for a one-month time period. It goes from March 16th to March 13th, so almost a month. You can see every time there's an uptick in the sales rank, you can figure that is at least one sale, okay? Because when you have when you get a sale, that's what happens. You know, you've probably seen this before. When a sale comes in, your, your sales rank spikes or your bestseller rank spikes. Well, that's what Camel, Camel, Camel is tracking. They take snapshots periodically of every single product, and they do it for free. I don't understand what their business model is because this information is extremely valuable. 
but they don't even make you log in to see this information. So use it while it's available. But this is a great way to see a, a product that doesn't have a great bestseller rank. It's a great way to see exactly how many units they're selling. So let's say that you're, you decide to go into this spiral slicer business. Well, look at the items that are on like page four, five, six, seven for the main keyword and see how well they're doing. Oops, sorry. And see how well they're doing. Because then if you only do as well as an item that's on the fourth or fifth page, you'll know how much your what your potential is. So in this case, this one is selling, it looks like about thirty, maybe twenty or, or thirty per month. Okay, uh, next page please. Next slide. So again, this one is a product that's ranked 9,398, so it's selling about 20, 25 a month, according to Camel, Camel, Camel. All right, uh, next slide. So we're going to go on to the next topic now, what to do when your product isn't selling. All right, next slide. There are only three reasons that a product isn't selling. Next slide. Number one, no one is finding your listing in the search results. Number two. No one is clicking your listing in the search results. And uh, next slide. Number three, your listing is not converting prospects into sales. So those are really the only three reasons why your product isn't selling. You might come up with some other reasons, but that's going to fit into one of these three categories. All right, so, and it could be, next slide please, it could be more than one of these problems but you need to know which it is before you start trying to attack the problem. If you can figure out what it is, you can, you have a much better chance of solving that problem. Okay, next slide please. All right, so number one, no one is finding your listing in the search results. All right, so what you want to do is, I've got sort of a little flow chart here for you. You create a keyword list, and I said use the keyword planner, or but Ben recommended merchant words. You could use that as well, whatever you have access to. Um, create a keyword list of at least 25 keywords and create a spreadsheet, just like I show here. And check your product ranking for each keyword and search in all of Amazon, not just the particular category. All right, and then here's the spreadsheet. And if the product, if your product is not on at least page one, two, or three, then just put in a for the ranking, just put not ranked. Because if it's not on the, the first three pages, it might as well not be ranked. Okay, you're not going to get a lot of sales. All right, so is your product on page one or more, what, sorry about that, is your product on page one for one or more keywords and they're getting at least 500 monthly searches total? Now, I said 500 monthly searches, and that's looking at the Keyword Planner tool. Just a little aside, the Keyword Planner tool, the search counts there are way lower than what you're actually going to get on Amazon as a general rule. I actually did this test a, a couple of months ago. Um, Amazon doesn't give us a whole lot of data, but one place they do give us some data on keyword searches is in the, the, uh, the advertising platform. So... I jacked up my bids for all my keywords to $10 a click for a few days. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that my ad was being displayed. And then when I got the results back, I could see how many impressions my ad got. And for some of my keywords, I was getting 10 times as many impressions as what Google was saying there were for searches for that keyword. So I think that that in Amazon, especially for the buying keywords, I think the accounts are a lot higher than, than what you see in the keyword planner. Okay, so if you're getting if you're not getting at least 500 monthly searches total, then the problem is probably that people aren't finding your item. So what you need to do is find some long tail keywords. It really segues into what Ben was saying about the uh, the nibble launch. You know, find those long tail keywords that you can dominate and start ranking for them or start trying to rank for them instead of going after the main keywords. Okay, let's go on to the next slide then. So let's see. Hey, James, let's... just a real quick question. So yeah. in, in a Keyword Planner and that test that you did, very fascinating. So you said 
it, it, it appeared to be almost 10 times for higher in the real world. For some keywords, yeah. Yeah. So just as a general rule of thumb, if we're thinking, okay, what's a, you know, how do we earmark actual searches? Would you say anywhere from five to 10 times the, uh, the number? I would say, I would say, yeah, I would say five to 10 times. The problem is when I was, when I did that, that test, I was just kind of assuming that if I bid the highest for any keyword that my ad would always show up. Yeah. And now I'm thinking that it probably, that probably wasn't the case. I probably still wasn't getting 100% of the ad impressions. So it's probably even higher than that. Mm. I mean, it's probably even a higher, higher than a multiple of five to 10. Gotcha. But yeah, if you just go by, you know, if you just say five times, then, then I think that uh, that's going to be a really conservative good guess. All right, great. Thank you. Okay, uh, so the next slide, the next reason that you're not getting sales is because no one is clicking your listing in the search results. So let's say that your listing is coming up on page one or page two for at least one keyword that's getting decent searches, but you're still not getting any sales. The problem could be that your listing is not attractive enough to people who who are uh, searching for that product. Your product comes up, but people aren't clicking on it. So the solution there is change your title, make your title shorter, make it longer, change your main image, and adjust your pricing. Because those are the three things that people see when they do a search. They see the image, they see the, the title of the product, and they see the price. So try adjusting those three things. See what happens. All right, uh, next slide please. Now. How do you know if people are clicking or not? Because Amazon doesn't really give you that information, right? Well, next slide, please. The way you tell is run Amazon ads because they use the same format in the ad display as they do in the search results. I mean, look at this example here. The, the sponsored ad, and I just pulled this a couple of days ago. The sponsored ad is the cow ears for dogs, and if you look at the search results, the exact same product, it's almost the same listing. So, if your ad is not doing well in search, I mean, sorry, if your ad is not doing uh, well in the ad platform, if you're just not getting a lot of clicks there, then you're probably not getting a lot of clicks in the search either. Okay, and here's where, you, um, next slide please, you can check the performance of your product um, by looking at the SKU advertising report. Now this is after, you have to be running ads in order to see this, but after you start running ads, then you'll be able to get this report. It will show you by keyword how many impressions you're getting and how many clicks you're getting. And by that, you can see what your click-through rate is. So I know one of the questions is, well, what's a good click-through rate? Um, that's a good question. If, are you getting any click-through rate at all? But if you're getting anything above a 1% click-through rate, then that's exceptional. All right, next slide, please. Actually, the last slide. So the last, the third thing is that your your listing is not converting your prospects into sales. So, product, uh, your listing is uh, is showing up in the search results on page one, getting decent searches. People are clicking on your link and getting in to see your product, but they're not buying still. Well, in this case, you need to change your bullets and your description need to get more reviews and again lower or raise the price. Those are the things, those are the biggest bang for your buck when it comes to enhancing your listing. Your bullets and your description and I should also put in there more images. This this one in particular only has one image so you need to make sure that you're you're using as many images as you're allowed which right now is nine. Alright so those are the three Three things that you can do, three things you need to track if you're not getting the sales that you that you want to get. Great. Great stuff. I took a, a lot of notes on that. That's that's uh love the uh, spreadsheet idea, you know, where you look up uh, if it's ranked in the top three pages and also based on that uh, test that you did on the uh, keyword uh, planning tool, the uh, disparity between what they display and the actual uh 
amount of volume. Very interesting. Great stuff, James. Um, I just want to give him a plug here. Uh, you guys know that when I do use an affiliate link that I donate a hundred percent of, of the proceeds that we get from guys like James to support a local breast cancer charity that my wife and I, um, you know, like to help out. They're a really underfunded sort of outfit. So, <laughs> so just a couple hundred bucks that we send in and they're like, Oh, thank you so much. But, um, just so you know, his Azon power pack, um, uh, sells, um, not at a discount anywhere else that I'm aware of. And, um, and I hit him up and I said, Hey, I know we're going to have people that are going to want to dive into Azon power pack if they didn't buy it the first time. So he is giving uh, my students an exclusive half off for a few days. This is an affiliate link, whether you use it or not, that's cool with me. I don't care. Uh, but if you like what James is teaching, I highly recommend the Azon Power Pack. Uh, I would refer you to the ASM Masters Forum and just do a search uh, of the reviews that this tool has gotten from the ASM Masters students. Um, I, for one, have it and can't really can't recommend it highly enough. Um, do you have time for a couple questions, James? Yeah, I'd love to. I was going to ask you if there's any questions about what I went through. I know I went through kind of quickly. Um, okay, so what EJ wants to know, does Azon Power Pack run on Mac? Yes, it's actually web-based, so it runs on any, any... Well, it won't run on a tablet right now because it's uh, uh, based off of the Flash platform, but PC or Mac. Um, so we have several questions about the AliExpress test, um, that I won't ask the individual questions. I think, I think people were just trying to make the connection because, you know, we were all taught the ASM method of doing it, where you invest a crap load of money, <laughs> uh, on a relatively, you know, untested market. I mean, you, you by and large, and what James was showing was just a way to test it dirt cheap. And just, just to see if it has a pulse and that's you know, a good way of putting it. Yeah. It's a very good way of putting it, Ben. See if it has a pulse. I, I call it showing signs of life, but it's, it's the same, same thing. Yeah. You know, uh, one of my mentors too, it's kind of funny. We both share, uh, um, you know, the, the history with uh, Gary Halbert and I remember I was so broke. I was in college and he came out with this, with, with these copywriting tapes. See, back then we all watched, you know, tapes. We didn't have, we didn't have streaming media. And, um, somehow, you know, I got through his, his secretary, um, uh, what was her name? Teresa, I think. Teresa. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I talked to Gary and I was like super nervous. You know, I was like, I'm, you know, very, very young. And I told him I didn't have any money. And, uh, and, and he said to me, quote, and by the way, I'm sorry if I offend anybody out there, but this is Gary Halbert. He goes, if you, he goes, if you can't make a million bucks with this course, you need to sell your business and go, go get a job, you know, flipping effing hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Gary Halbert, right? Classic. Um, but uh, something that he said that I think is a good tie in to your whole AliExpress case study is this. He said, and I'm sure you've heard this, James, and, uh, but, but I love this. He said, okay, um, we're all going to open up a restaurant. You guys can have any advantage that you want. And he went around the classroom and they said, uh, we want an unlimited marketing budget. He goes, eh. and some other guy goes, uh, we're going to have a killer USP. He goes, eh. and on and on and on. And he just shut everybody down. And he said, nope, wrong answer. Here's the right answer. What I want is my number one advantage if I have a restaurant is a starving crowd. And that's what James Jones is saying. See if it has a pulse. See if the starving crowd exists. Um, and you may not be able to do it with one product or, or 20. You might have to do it, you know, you know, more. But, but the point is the same. Is there a way that we could test safely uh, without having to invest thousands and thousands of dollars, right? I think that was your whole point. That is the whole point. And, you know, after doing the, re the reverse engineering and the arithmetic on it, you know, you see this product and you say, "Wow, this this might this is this is really a great product." If if you got the money to go for it and buy the inventory and you know get your minimum order quantity out down, then go for it. You know, at that point, you've kind of proved that the market exists. Um, I get the question all the time from my people, though, of uh, you know, how do I sell an inventory? How do I, you know, how do I basically test this out before spending a bunch of money on inventory? So that's why I came up with this method. Yeah. Yeah, we actually did something similar. Um, you, you know, Jason and I actually sourced 42 products in January. I mean, we just went on a on a tear, 
And literally, we just sent them off in like poly bags, no branding, just to see if there was a pulse. And it was very interesting. And, you know, we got so busy that we didn't even, even frankly, do anything to promote these products. And we just looked at the numbers recently. And it's so funny, this 80 20 rule, about 20% naturally just started to kick in and get sales. So, of course, at this point, now we're going to move it to what we call phase two, and we're going to start to brand it, um, ordering larger inventory. But now, now you know, it's not a theory. We have the marketplace telling us that, hey, there's a starving crowd here. Exactly. You know, people get hung up on this, this concept of private labeling, too. I think a lot of people think it's some complicated thing they got to do. Private labeling can be just as simple as putting, like Ben said, putting the product in the poly bag and stick a stick a sticker with your with your brand name on the poly bag. Exactly. Yep. By the way, uh, just last couple comments. Um, one of our students, Roberto, says, "Fantastic, love James Jones." <laughs> so you got some fans. Me too, out there, Roberto. <laughs> uh, Joe Miller said, I already have the newest Azon power pack. I use it every day. Awesome tool. That's Joe Miller. Thanks, Joe. And another person, Azon power pack's awesome. That's um, Hannah, Beverly Hannah. Sorry. Uh, let me just see Thanks, one Beverly. question here. Uh, Mark, I will cover your question on the q and I, I have an answer for you for Mark Bisset. I did see that email. Um. Okay, so I think we're good here. James, I just want to uh, thank you again for your time, and uh, hopefully we can have you again here in a couple months to share some other ninja stuff that you're, you know, that you're testing and coming yeah, up man, with. It's, it's always a pleasure coming on. I really, I really love coming on to your, uh, to your training. Do you awesome. mind if I stick on uh, for a few minutes and watch uh, some more of your, your coaching here? Absolutely, go for it. I'm just going to uh, pause my screen here for a second. I lost my slides. I'll be right back there. Uh, James, you can still hear me, can't you? Yes, I can. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I'm going to mute myself, but I'm just going to listen in the background. Thanks so much. Okay. Thank God I didn't um, accidentally end the seminar. I, <laughs> I hit the wrong button and it almost kicked everybody out. Woo! Live without a net, man. Crazy. All right, let's let's move on here. Um, I know we're we're running a little low long here, but um, as you guys know, I like to uh, try to share everything that we have going on in our business. So make sure that you take a quick stretch here. Um, grab a sip of your water or your coffee or your alcohol, <laughs> whatever you're drinking, because I want uh, clear heads here. Because we're going to talk about a killer ninja strategy called the bell cow strategy. Then we're going to do something on managed by stats. Then we're going to do something on how to deal with hijackers. So we got about another 45 minutes worth of content here. So we're going to go uh, to about 2 p.m. Eastern. All right. All right. The bell cow technique. I love this thing. Now, last month I taught something called the Rainmaker Day. Uh, and it's based on this idea that this Monday through Friday work nine to five work regimen is not very supportive of the entrepreneur. In fact, that Monday to Friday, nine to five was invented during the industrial revolution when people were working in factories and it was just a very easy way to organize workers. I mean, prior to that, nobody worked Monday to Friday, nine to five, you know, because we were, <laughs> you know, the vast majority of people were farmers and, you know, you work six days a week and you work whenever you have to work to make things happen. But anyway, this sort of evolved into mainstream as more and more uh, people adopted this Monday through Friday, nine to five, but it, it, it was not very useful to entrepreneurs. So years ago, I took this uh, program by Dan Sullivan and he, and he said, you know what? Entrepreneurs should divvy up their week into three types of days, just three types of days. S you know, stop thinking in terms of shift work and think of three types of days. The first type of day, uh, and I came up with my own names for this, but uh, the first type of day is called a free day. And a free day is where you are completely unencumbered by any business building type of activities. So you're unplugging from, from any Skype, from business emails, et cetera. So, you, so the theory being that, especially us entrepreneurs, you need full rejuvenation and it actually makes you more productive when you emerge from that free day. 
The second type of day is called a detail day. Again, and this is what I call them. A detail day is where you work on, uh, let's call it infrastructure, operational issues, you know, seller central problems, uh, nitty gritty part of your business. But the most valuable type of day of the week is what I call the Rainmaker Day. And this is what I'm going to ask you all to adopt. This is one of those habits that, you know, I've been teaching this to chiropractors for about 15 years. And time and time again, they say that this was a life changer for them. When they heard this concept of the Rainmaker Day, they noticed an upward curve, uh, uh, literally an explosion of their productivity in terms of their marketing and their growth and their sales increases in their practices. And I've adopted this uh, in every business that I've run. And I taught it for the first time to you guys last month. And I want to really bring this forward again. So a Rainmaker Day, what is a Rainmaker Day? You're going to carve out one full day per week, come hell or high water, where you are out of the alligator pit. You are not answering your phone. You are not on Skype. You're not on email. And for one full day, or if you're already employed and, you, and, and you're kind of you know having to fit in this business um, until you uh, quit your job, you still will want one dedicated day where you work on Rainmaker activities. Even if for you, that's four hours uh, after work, that's fine. But one focused day. You're not allowed to bleed days into each other. So you're not allowed to do some detail stuff, some free time, and some Rainmaker tasks. Because life doesn't work that way, right? We tend to do what's most urgent, not what's most important. So you really want a focused day, one day per week, where you do nothing but focus on business building, marketing, and promotional tasks. And that's what the goal of a Rainmaker Day is. Money-making, marketing, and promotional tasks, okay? Now, we also said that, well, what do you work on on your Rainmaker Day? Well, a good discipline to adhere to is to implement the Rainmaker Day is you want to implement your marketing tasks in order of least expensive to most expensive in that order. So throughout the month, you're implementing free, low cost, low cost, low cost, maybe some costly tactics, but by month's end, you may never reach uh, into the most expensive things. So this discipline makes you very, very profitable and um, really lets you do, do what I call this sweat equity type marketing that very few other people are willing to do, uh, but can yield really big results. So what we are doing starting this month is we're kicking off our, our Amazon Rainmaker series. So in other words, this month and all the months moving forward, I'm going to be sharing with you the best low and no cost marketing tactics, things you can do specifically on your upcoming Rainmaker days. So this is called the bell cow tactic. Let me just give you some history behind what a bell cow is. You know, cows are dumb. Ask any farmer. Now, in Switzerland, where a lot of these farms are, are carved into the hills, it can get very, very cold in winter. And despite having access to barns, these cows are so dumb, they'll literally freeze to death up in the mountains unless the farmer goes out and leads the herd into the barn where it's warm. Now, farmers noticed that in every herd, there's typically one or two or three cows that were smart enough to meander and make its way back to the barn on its own when the temperature dropped below freezing. So what happened over the years was the farmer would attach a big bell, like you see here in a picture, around the cow's neck so as to draw the attention of the rest of the herd who upon hearing the you know ding, ding, ding of the bell, they would follow the bell cow back to the barn and they wouldn't freeze, <laughs> okay? So this lead cow became known as the bell cow. Now, in every product niche, there exist bell cows, okay? These are the YouTube channel owners with thousands of subscribers. These are the bloggers that, that read every single blog post that that blogger makes. These are the big fan page owners, okay? These, these are like the Swiss bell cows leading the rest of the herd to the barn, okay? They control large centers of influence if they're a bell cow. So guys, here's a strategy. If we can make contact with the bell cows, get them to review or discuss or mention our Amazon product with their herd, it can result in sales, which leads to a boost in Amazon rank, which leads to a buzz within the niche, 
and big increases in visibility. Okay, so let me teach you how we're going to do this. Now, there in the coming months, I'm going to show you how we are targeting bell cows across different media. I think the best one and the most exciting one to start with, and frankly, the easiest is YouTube bell cows. Okay, why? Because getting video reviews is the fastest way to access their centers of influence. You know, we say that video is 3D uh, because it can really kind of flesh out the benefits of a product. There's nothing more powerful, in my opinion, than a well done show and tell product demo video. And these guys will do that. And you know, the other great thing that we know is that all these channel owners, they're, they're looking for content ideas. So if they like your product, then, uh, then there's a chance that they'll, you know, talk it up and they'll, and, and they'll show how it works and blah, 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 blah. Okay. So what step one, how do we find YouTube bell cows? Well, I'm going to show you how we're doing it. This isn't perfect, but this is what we're doing right now. And this works very well for us. So if you have improvements, please share them, uh, on a future Q and a, cause I'd love to hear, you know, if I'm missing something here, but this is how, this is how we have it wired. Number one, we kind of had this goal that we want to find roughly 20 to 30 YouTube channel bell cows. Okay. So we're either going to find them directly in the niche or in a related kind of space. So if you're selling, let's say prenatal supplements, obviously I can't type in prenatal supplement because, <laughs> you know, there's not any big YouTube channels that are that specific, but so we have to go kind of one level, uh, out. We know there are a ton of mommy video bloggers. There's tons of, uh, you know, pregnancy tip type videos, child raising tips, you know, pregnancy yoga, uh, et cetera, with huge following. So literally, um, in like 10 seconds, I just typed in prenatal advice just to see what came up in YouTube and voila, this pregnancy yoga thing got a quarter million views. The, the uh, the bottom pregnancy yoga video got almost a million views. I mean, guys, that's killer. <laughs> so imagine we have a tea kettle brand. So obviously I'm not going to type in tea kettle because there's not going to be any viable tea kettle channels. So I start thinking about related. So I start thinking, well, who sells tea kettles? Well, lots of cooking stores would. So let's take a look at the cooking videos on YouTube, right? So um, step number one, if I'm going to, uh, use sort of cooking as my niche. I want to find out what the most popular YouTube searches are for cooking. So I use a free tool called SEO chat tool suggest. It's, it's a long URL and you'll see it right there. In fact, let me just uh, jump out of this slide and let me just show you what it looks like here. Uh, this is free. Uh, you'll find the URL on the slides when I post it. Let's just, just for sake of ease, let's uncheck everything and just type in cooking. And it'll actually scrape, okay, like you guys know what uh, Fresh Keys does, I've taught that, where it'll it'll basically kind of simulate as if somebody's typing in cooking and it'll kind of auto-populate or suggest a, a, a keyword phrase. Uh, and you see that happening on Amazon all the time. Well, this basically does the same thing because YouTube has, has a kind of auto-suggest, Amazon does and so on. So let's see what we have here. This is going really slow right now. Sorry, guys. Well, anyway, this is what it looks like. <laughs> it, it kicked out this. So cooking, okay. Cooking channel, cooking show, cooking videos. So that's just kind of what I'm, I'm going to start to target to try to find some of these channel owners. All right. Now, how do we find these bell cow step-by-step -step is I go to a little known search function on YouTube called channel search. Okay. And I find this way more useful than just doing a generic YouTube search. I do both, but I start off with the YouTube channel thing. So as you can see here, if you type in cooking, I can automatically see where the action is. I don't have to kind of wade through individual videos. Okay. So you see this, um, Hyla cooking, she's got a quarter million subscribers. Simple cooking channel, 800,000. So somebody like this guy, see cooking with John, he's got 13,000 subscribers. See, he'd probably be perfect for something like this. He'd probably love a freebie. 
Uh, look at this. Great Depression cooking. 70,000 subscribers. She's a 98-year-old cook um, who recounts her childhood during the Great Depression as <laughs> she prepares meals. You suck at cooking. 4,000. Anyway, you could literally just go down this list. And it's a general rule of thumb. I'm only interested in anybody with a thousand subscribers or more, a thousand subscribers or, or, or more. So like 4,000, I'm happy with. That's fine. I'd probably send one to her. I mean, 70,000. She'd probably love a tea cuddle. Um, so um, that's where I start my search. Okay. So as I say here again, just to reiterate, uh, we want to target channels with a thousand plus subscribers. Now in the real world, somebody who's got like, See this guy, Simple Cooking Channel with 800,000 subscribers. I don't know if I'll ever, ever hear back from them, but it's worth a try. But realistically, you're probably going to get more play from a guy like Cooking with John with 12,000 subscribers in the real world. Okay, next we're going to do a general YouTube search for cooking videos. And then we're going to sort by view count. Okay. And this is what we're looking for. Videos with a crap load of views and a minimum of 1,000 subscribers. Now, this person might actually be too big for us, but this is something that came up. This video on a chocolate lava cake got 5 million views, and she's got over 1.4 million subscribers. Again, I don't know if I'll get any play, but it's worth a shot. It costs nothing for us to send them an email. Okay, So uh, it probably takes us 15 to 20 minutes tops to do all that research, we come up with a hit list of 20 to 30 bell cows that have a thousand or more subscribers. Now, how do we contact these YouTube channel owners? Okay. This is super simple, uh, super simple. Let me just show you. So I'm back on this youtube.com forward slash channels. And let's say that we want to contact Hyla cooking and simple cooking channel. You know, these are, these are big bell cows. So very simple. Click on the blue link here. I'm going to pause this video. Okay. And all these channels have an about page. Now check this out. Look at all these ways that I can contact. Now see it says for business inquiries, view email address. Ding, 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 bingo. Now I'm not going to click it because I don't want to reveal her, her email. But I did click this in preparation for this. And she just has a regular Gmail address that, that she shows. Okay. So it tells me that she's reachable. Also see the send message here. If they don't have something like this and if they don't have any other social media, uh, everybody can be contacted through their internal YouTube uh, message system. Okay. But, um, from my experience, you want to contact them using two modalities. So ideally like an email address or a contact form on her site or like a Facebook message, um, you know, and, and in a send message, but I would pick two, two ways. So in this case, if it were me, this tells me that she doesn't mind, you know, being contacted that she wants to monetize. So I'm going to uh, send her an email and then I'll probably also send a duplicate email internally. And only if I don't hear back, would I uh, try to reach her through some of these other social media channels. Okay. Let's, let's see what simple cooking uh, channel has available. I bet you guys never knew how easy it was to contact these channel owners, did you? If you click about, uh, oh, same thing. Check this out, and we can send a message. So even big players with 800,000 you know, subscribers are making themselves accessible. Why? Guys, you, know, you can have 800,000 subscribers and not be making jack from your, you know, from your YouTube channel, okay? So anyway, that's how to contact them. Uh, I have a brief and quick write-up on how to do this right in the slides. Now, now we're going to ask the video uh, channel owner, we're going to ask them for a video review. Okay. So here's the gist of our approach. We want to do a schmooza palooza. So step number one, so we want to subscribe to their channel for reasons that you'll see in a moment. We want to compliment them and basically say, hey, you know, because of your influence and respect, I'd be honored to send you a free product in exchange for your mailing address and a review if you like our product. Okay. We want to credentialize ourselves. So in the contact email template that I have for you here in a second, we're going to put your Amazon URL so they can 
click through. They can see that you're legit. They can read some of the reviews. You know, they'll, you know, they won't sit there and read every word. They're going to take a quick look and just see if it's something that, that would, that would be appealing to them. And we're going to suggest, we're going to plant the seed that if they like it, that we'd be honored if they could talk about it on one of their videos. So as you guys know, um, I like to provide the word for word copy for you guys. Now I'm going to provide this to you with a warning. This is pretty much verbatim the email that we're sending. Please do not copy this verbatim because that'll just make me look stupid if you just so happen to be in the same kind of product categories and we're both sending the verbatim email. So please rewrite this, make it different, make it your own. Um, you know, it'll just benefit all of us. But here's the gist of it. So the subject line says, says question. And by the way, I found that to be one of the best subject lines. The, it just, everyone wants to know what the heck this is when you say question. So hi name, I'm a subscriber to, and you insert their YouTube a channel name, channel, and I love what you're doing. Now that's why we want to subscribe to it. So we're not lying. <laughs> I wanted to reach out to you because I own a company that sells a top rated tea kettle on amazon.com. And then you insert the link right there. I would like to mail you my tea kettle for free. I just need your mailing address. If you like it, I would really appreciate a video review. We're a small family run business and your influence and respect that you command would mean the world to us. There's zero obligation. If you don't like the product, just keep it on the house. Just reply with your mailing address and I'll, and I will rush deliver one to you ASAP. Regards, Joe Blow. And then here's where you want to, again, further credentialize yourself. Put your branded e-commerce site. If you have one, if not, then just put in your brand name that, that displays on Amazon. Okay. Pretty ninja, right? Very simple. And I'll tell you what, who doesn't want something free? Now, after they respond with their address, um, just in case you don't know how to do this, you're going to create a fulfillment order with an Amazon seller central. So you go to inventory, hover your mouse over the product, and then you're going to click on a link that says create fulfillment order. And you basically just copy and paste the person's name and address. Select one or two day shipping. Do not be cheap. You want a wow experience. You want a, a, a sort of top of mind experience. You know, we're all busy. If you wait a week before they get it, they're going to forget what the heck this even is. So rush deliver. We usually do next day air. Reply saying it's going to ship directly from Amazon that you went ahead and paid for rush delivery so they'd get it faster. Uh, why, why do we say that we paid for rush delivery? Well, I want an IOU with that person, right? I want, I want them to feel sort of obligated that they have to at least give this a fair chance. A few days later, follow up to make sure they got it and ask if they think their subscribers might be interested in a discount coupon that would be exclusive to that channel. Uh, and if so, that you'd be more than happy to provide one. Again, we don't need all, we just need some. Okay? Again, follow up again two weeks later and ask for their feedback at that point. So in other words, if they haven't proactively contacted me again, I don't want to beg them for a review. I say, hey, I'm just wondering if I can get your feedback on our tea kettle. And they'll come back and say, oh, yeah, yeah, we liked it. We just got busy. See, at that point, they're opening the door and saying, hey, you know what? Um, it would mean the world to a small business like ours if, if when you have a chance, if you could do a, 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 video, a video review or a mention about our product. Okay. So um, just some practical stuff before we wrap up this segment. Where is the YouTube inbox, how do you check your messages? Um, last year, they sort of changed the format. It used to be way easier to find these, but basically you're going to go to, uh, number one, you have to log into your, your YouTube channel. Now, don't do this as you as an individual. Remember, you want to log in and be sending these messages and replying uh, under, your, under, you, under your YouTube brand name. Okay, so... Uh, log in, then go to youtube.com forward slash dashboard, click community, and then click messages. And if you're logged in, um, uh, you, you can also use that to direct link that I gave you. But it's probably better to kind of learn the lay of the land in that, in that dashboard. That's why I showed you kind of the, the uh, three-step approach rather than just give you the link. All right. And it's kind of like a message center right in there. You can see the replies that came in. You can reply to them and so on and so forth. All right. Pretty cool, right? 
So uh, in the members area, along with this webinar replay, we will provide that bell cow email template. Again, please don't use it verbatim because this is something that me and my team are using. So just rewrite it, make it your own, but uh, you know, keep the spirit of it. And I think you do very well with that. Total cost, $0 to implement this on your Rainmaker day, other than the cost to ship the free samples. Okay. And remember, most people are, I mean, I take them at their word. They're not going to request free samples just to take advantage in most cases. Okay. So I'm going to skip the Q&A here because we are short on time. I'm going to uh, go right into module four, something I am absolutely super pumped about called Manage by Stats. Actually, uh, let me unmute Philip here. Uh, hey, uh, Philip, uh, can you unmute yourself? Hey, Philip, are you there? I think so. Hey, how are you? Awesome, great. Awesome great. content you got. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to uh, sort of go through my slides here, and then uh, I may kind of jump out of the presentation and just kind of ask a couple questions as we go, if that's okay. All right? Absolutely. All right, cool. So, yeah, this is this is... <laughs> This is one of those services that I'm kind of like bummed that I didn't learn about it sooner. Uh, I am so impressed by this. It's called Managed by Stats. And this is basically how to hire your own Amazon CFO for less than 30 bucks a month. And Philip, feel free to use that. <laughs> that should be your USP, man, because I love your service. Um, here's a big picture. The number one problem I'm seeing across the board with my fast trackers is that they don't really know their numbers. You know, James Jones talked about, you got to know the arithmetic, right? And I bet that if I had to guess, and please, I, I, I do not mean to offend anybody here. Um, but, uh, I, I, but I just want to say that most of you don't have a clue what your profit is, what your losses are for, for various products, right? And so, that is <laughs> scary. Um, I bet you don't know what your actual FBA fees are for your product line or who your, your repeat customers are or what your customers' real email addresses are. Well, Managed by Stats solves all these problems. So let's just take a quick look at this tool. Um, you guys know I do not expose my fast trackers to you know, every kind of shiny object that's out there. Uh, this is one of the few new tools that I put in front of you guys since I started this program. Um, I think this is a game changer. I think it's, um, well, you, you know, for what he's charging, mandatory, <laughs> okay? And by the way, I do have a CFO and I do have a bookkeeper and I'm still using Managed by Stats. So I blame this on Cabo. Um, <laughs> Uh, last August, um, myself um, and also the uh, creator of Managed by Stats, a guy named Philip Jepson, uh, we were sitting next to each other at the Cabo Mastermind uh, in in a glorious hotel called the Royal Solaris, right, Philip? <laughs> and he told me, uh, and he told the room how he had created a script that would basically crunch all his Amazon numbers. And with a few clicks of his mouse, it would upload it and it would just show him exactly what was going on. And we we're all like, dude, can you please share that with us? Because we all needed it. So fast forward to, to um, the April Cabo that I just came back from last week. I was sitting next to my friend Mattson Magleby and, and him and his brother are currently doing uh, roughly 250000 a month. And he was raving about Managed by Stats. And I didn't even know that Philip had released this uh, as a service. So I checked it out because it came so highly recommended and I really loved what I saw. So rather than kind of, you know, I don't want to belabor this point. I don't want to repeat stuff that you can watch for free on his video tutorials. Let me just show nine features that I love that we are implementing. Number one, I love the fast setup. Literally, it took me five minutes to integrate this and it was off to the races. It just started yanking my data and it started to compile charts and stats and my customer list for me, okay? This is, um, these aren't my actual stats. This is from a demo account that Philip shared, but at a glance, you can see what your monthly Amazon stats are or your bi-weekly stats or whatever time frame you want. And you can see, you can, um, in most cases, you'll probably wanna organize this by your ASIN because you probably don't have hundreds of products. But at a glance, you can see 
uh, what your profit, what your fees are, and what your losses are. Um, repeat buyers. Now, this is absolutely ninja. Okay, this has me very excited. Now, imagine the value of a of a repeat customer. As Jay Abraham said, um, somebody who is is a repeat customer has a three times higher likelihood of buying again than a quote unquote non uh, customer. You know, somebody cold three times higher value, at least from my experience. So what what the Philip uh, has allowed every, everybody to do with this tool is we can download all the repeat customers to a spreadsheet, which then we can, you know, upload to any direct mail house and we can send via, you know, via direct mail. Now we can send them coupons, offers, new launch notifications. We can send them, a you know, a, a very focused kind of kick-ass letter about joining our exclusive VIP customer list. We can send catalogs. We can send out small product samples, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is worth its weight in gold. Restock alerts. Um, this is also killer. A lot of you are just kind of, you know, eyeballing it. But as your as your product line grows, you know, we're sort of running into this problem. Uh, you know, we have multiple um, Amazon Seller Central accounts. And when you're juggling a lot, you know, with a smaller operation as far as employees, uh, you do not want to be in a place where you have a, a, a great selling product, but all of a sudden, just because you took your eye off the ball, you have no inventory. So I believe a Philip and, and you can please confirm this, that you're going to soon be adding a restock alert notice. Is that correct? We actually have one. Uh, it's on the dashboard. So it, it'll take uh, anytime you run below the, the time it takes to restock that product from your supplier, it'll put it right on the very um, front page when you first log in. Oh, and great. It might be a good idea to do an email notification as well. I hadn't even thought of that. Um, cool. Uh, can you just briefly explain what we're looking at here, how the restock alert works? Yes. So um, this is basically sorted by how much time you have left in stock. So if you look at the very top uh, item here, this is a made-up SKU with a, you know made-up stuff. But it basically says that we have 65 pieces total supply quantity. That means between what actually is in FBA uh, ready to be the full and what is being shipped into Amazon that's actually, you know, on its fat into inventory. That's what we have left. And in the last 30 days, we've sold 2,604 pieces. So obviously, you have about one day left. Um, so you are way behind the eight ball here on getting stuff shipped into Amazon. Um, if that was, you know, if that was really the case, um, the five weeks you can set that to whatever it is. Uh, we kind of just put it in there as five weeks by default. But if you have an eight-week lead time from when you place the order, you would just change it for that product to be eight weeks, and then we would uh, show you the alert as soon as you go below the eight weeks. Gotcha. And uh, and we do this for every single product all the way down. That's awesome. That's awesome. I like this a lot. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, let me keep going here. Now, <laughs> this is the other thing that um, when I saw this, um, you know, I asked Philip to Skype with me because I just wanted to make sure that I understood this properly. This ruined my sleeping patterns. I'm so excited about this. Imagine getting the real email addresses for all of our, well, not all of your, but for, for roughly 25% of your Amazon customers so that we could more aggressively build our house list. Now, you guys know that last month I taught exactly our, our multi-pronged approach to basically take the customers off Amazon onto our house list and ultimately put them through our own marketing funnels through our Shopify store. Well, what we're talking about here is something called email appending or appending email. So just kind of big picture, picture this. So we, we have a spreadsheet with all of the names and the shipping addresses of our Amazon buyers. Well, they match up those names and shipping addresses with emails. Okay. So now they see Ben Cummings at blah, blah, blah address. Somehow, some way they see that my email address happens to be blah, blah, blah. So voila, now I have access to the actual real email address, not that kind of disguise masked Amazon email address that they give us. So a lot of you have probably heard about email append. 
they're typically expensive services. They do not deal with kind of small time operators like me and you. They, they want thousands and thousands of names and addresses because roughly only 25% can they match up. I say only 25%, but that's a ultra valuable 25%. But the number one problem with it that had always sort of stopped us and many others that I know is it's expensive and they had a bare minimum. Well, check this out. I don't know how Philip did this, <laughs> but I'm happy he did. He basically is doing like a group buy of these, of his email append services. So basically now he has an email append option built into the back end of this service. Like in other words, on a monthly basis, no matter how little or how many new Amazon customers I have, I can subscribe to this service. It will go out there, it will append the emails, and it will automatically add them into the customer records for me. As far as I know, this is never possible before Philip did this. Um, and uh, Philip, do you have anything to add to that? Um, well, it's certainly correct. I mean, that is what we're doing. We are, you know, we, we found a way of doing this so we can do a bulk buy once a month on this. And, um, you know, it, it gets rid of this annoying minimum requirement that there is because, you know, the, the, the services that we actually get this stuff, it's just very expensive. And it uh, unless you are adding tens of thousands of new customers every single month, um, it's just prohibitively expensive. So by doing it this way, we were able to get, you know, ba basically down to almost no minimum for, for everybody. And... Um, it makes it dirt cheap, and even if you only add, uh, you know, 50 new subscribers, uh, of, you know, and, and and we get somewhere between 25 and, and 40 percent. It it varies depending on, on you know on the customer type, but um, often it's more than 25 percent. But again, uh, even if you're only adding 10 people, um, this makes it worth it. Oh yeah, yeah. What? Well, it's, it's just absolutely awesome because check this out. So this is a sneak peek inside the dashboard. And so see where it says Amazon email address and it gives some kind of convoluted, weird masked kind of fake email address because Amazon doesn't want you to have the, the actual contact information of their customers. Well, after uh, you know, Philip runs his email pen service, voila, within that, that customer record that, that you can see is is the real email address for that customer. And Philip, would you just confirm that it, that it automatically puts it into that customer record for you in your dashboard, correct? That's correct. We, we run it once a month, and then as soon as it's run, we re-import it back in here. And then once it's in here, of course, you can then you can export all of these into a Excel CSV file and um, uh, and you can email to just those guys with those email addresses. Nice. Now, um, if you guys um, express an interest, uh, uh, I'd like to twist you know, Philip's arm here and on a future webinar, teach us uh, what to do with these email addresses so that we're compliant. And so um, you guys can just let us know if that would be something that would be of interest. Um, um, I know it's certainly of interest to me, but uh, we want to deliver what you guys want. But this is, this is just killer stuff. Now, uh, these are the email append options. You can see this on his website. And right there it says the, the customer records are added on a regular basis every month. Now, I like this feature a lot. This is the GeoAnalyze because it can be used in two ways. Uh, you guys all know that I'm a big advocate of proactive paid traffic, and I love Facebook. Well, <laughs> I've never before been able to see my you know, the 20% of the states that are bringing 80% of the sales, you know, you can kind of guess, but I want to see the data right there because this now lets me dial into what I call the highest probability buyers. It also makes my direct mail results more efficient. If I know that my, that my biggest pool of buyers bar none, like California is, is, is doing, you know, twice the sales of the next closest state in New York, I'm going to start off all of my direct mail uh, testing with California. Um, this is also something that I like a lot. My employees, frankly, hate Amazon Seller Central for the same reasons that I do. It is very unuser friendly, rather intimidating, hard to wade through useful data there, right? When I showed them the ease of managed by stats 
to look up customer records. They they just took to it immediately and we're going to be shifting over to pretty much using that in place of the, the seller central dashboard uh, whenever possible, just because of sheer ease of use. Now, there's two interesting ways that you can access the customer records. Um, you can see that I've kind of highlighted it. You can go to customer list and you can type in somebody's name, their email or their phone number. And you can click this next to every single customer record. Click this edit button. And it's like an x-ray view of, of their buying activity and all the current information that we have. And, you know, as you build your own uh, off Amazon business, you can add to these customer records. If you know what their birth year is, what their gender is, how many kids they have, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It also shows the transactions by buyer. I mean, uh, very, very useful to have. You know, when you're emailing with somebody on a customer service issue, you see they're a very, very good customer and they're complaining about something. You're going to handle that customer far different than somebody who's refunded the last two orders from you, aren't you? Um, this is the other way that you can look up uh, the customer information, do it by transactions. Now, this is the way that most of us have been doing it in Seller Central. Oftentimes, let me just give you a, a common scenario that we encounter all the time. So somebody leaves us seller feedback, not a review, but seller feedback. And they say, five stars, this is the most wonderful product on planet Earth. Well, we want to gently <laughs> say, hey, we so appreciate the seller feedback. Would you mind posting this, though, on the actual product page? So typically, uh, the way that we were doing it is you would uh, search by the order ID and uh, that's how we would contact the person. Um, and this is just, just a simpler way to do it. You have one dashboard and we, we, uh, we enter the order ID and voila, we can contact them that way. Um, again, just another view of this. Oh, and by the way, this is a great um, uh, screenshot of the type of data that you can now see. See how it says they have one order here on February 15th and then they refunded that order on April 15th. See, it's the same order ID. And this leads us to the uh, the other feature that I love. Now, I can't claim uh, credit for coming up with this term, but Wilson Matos calls it the brain. Now, at Rapid Crush, they have uh, a, a, a customer record of all the purchases that I've ever made with that company, all the refunds that I ever did, if I did any, um, if I'm on a payment plan, when my next payments do basically it's a full customer record of me and every other rapid crush customer. And we've had that for years in our practice management consulting company as well. Uh, it's just so much more valuable for reasons that I stated earlier to just see at a glance, the value of that customer, what they're buying, their contact info. You can just really wow people with that information and you can handle the customer service more appropriately. Uh, well, this has a built in brain essentially because it shows all the transactions as I already mentioned, and you can really customize some of the customer details as you get to know, know those customers, you know, on a personal level. Okay. So, um, Oh, uh, let me just show you this link here. Uh, Philip has a 14 day free trial. Um, and I am promoting this cause I love this tool. Uh, you can, uh, grab it, go to the link here, managed by stats.com forward slash go. That's a link that you want to use. And again, um, I believe that's an affiliate link. I don't even know uh, if it is uh, 100% of my affiliate commissions. I donate uh, to the local breast cancer um, you know, charity that we support. Okay. So uh, any questions for Philip, please ask away here. We'll, we'll take about five minutes worth of questions before we move on. Uh, Paul uh, says, what's the link to Philip's product? Voila, right there. <laughs> Managedbystats.com forward slash go. I hope everybody buys this because I want this tool to be around forever. I am freaking in love with this tool. And this all came about because I really needed it for my business. So, you know, it, it, it came out of necessity. And then, you know, I, I have a mastermind and they all kind of said, you know, we really need that too. And and, uh, and it's funny because uh, Morgan Mapleby was definitely vocal in, you know, I need this feature. Uh, the whole um, uh, repeat customer um, feature came about because Morgan was, you know, I really need this. And, and it's funny because I, I hadn't even really thought of doing it, um, but he insisted that he needed it and I built it. 
And uh, when I went and looked at the repeat customers for my products, I was blown away with how many I had and, you know, the possibility of marketing to them and doing customized messaging to them. Um, so it, that, it's turned out to be just an incredible tool. Well, as soon as I saw, saw the repeat customer function, you know, um, those of you that have been to the Kava Masterminds, uh, on the second day, uh, late afternoon, we all hang out in a pool and we brainstorm. And I, and I was talking to, to uh, you know, Matson and Morgan, and I said, well, you know, what are you doing with your repeat buyers? And I said, well, what am I doing, doing with my repeat buyers? Like, what a pain. I, I can't even access my repeat buyers as far as I know, unless I got to be a freaking CPA to wade through spreadsheets. They go, huh, huh, huh. no, you can do it in managed by stats. And my eyes went like, boom. <laughs> um, you know, just at this most simple level, I mean, think about this. Um, so you have your list of your most rabid, hyper-responsive buyers, uh, and you have proof because they voted with their wallet, right? So people that have ordered two or more products from you. And let's say they're coming out, I don't know, I'm just making this up. Let's say you're coming out with a new dog bone. Well, you can you can easily get, get small, like mini samples of pretty much any product. Uh, it would be so valuable to send a free sample with a wonderful, you know, complimentary letter that, that looks like it was personalized to your top 1% of your hyper responses, like with a coupon, half off or something like that. Uh, there's just so much ninja stuff you can do to build a legitimate long-term branded business with this data. Uh, Steve says, by city would be very powerful for local marketing or Amazon product. I think he means the uh, geo, geo targeting. That's a good idea. Um, we it wouldn't be hard for us to do. We would probably take you know maybe the top fifty cities or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. It's I'll, I'll stick that in that into the uh, new features list. Cool. Uh, and Mark, you are right. I said there were nine features, but I only I only had eight. You are correct. Busted. Uh, let's see. Um, RM wants to know, does this tool help with finding customers who leave reviews and we're trying to find their order? Um, it helps in, in that if they left a name that, you know, they use, um, that, that's the real name, not a, a complete pseudonym, then you can look it up very easily in there. Uh, so, yeah, for, for us, it's worked many times to find them. Uh, but, you know, if they, if they leave something that's completely not decipherable or, or not a real name, then you can't find them. Yeah. It has to be similar to what they use to order the product. Uh, Steve says, use it already, and it's awesome. So you have a fan there, Philip. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, Helene says, blown away with the information. Awesome, Helene. Uh, Matthew um, Matthew has, a, has a, a specific question about the dashboard. Uh, Matthew, if it's okay, just go ahead and privately email Philip that question. Uh, his service is awesome. I'm sure, sure he can answer that for you. Uh, uh, Stacy wants to know, is the get real emails part of the monthly subscription or extra? No, that would be extra because uh, Philip has to purchase this service. So he's basically organizing all of us as a group buy to do it. That's correct. And, and you end up paying only for, you know, I, uh, you either pay just the, the $30 a month, um, or it's about, it, it comes out to about 16 cents or so per Per record that you get, if if it goes beyond the the thirty um, dollars, just just so you guys know, guys, that is dirt cheap because usually they have a bare minimum. They charge a setup fee, blah 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 blah. So just to give you some context here, these are not expensive rates that the Philip has has arranged for us. Yeah, we typically run into. I mean, when we do this, and and, and we are fairly well connected, we you know we typically have to pay a, a three hundred dollar minimum. Uh, so you have to come up with you know, uh, at least that many hits. I mean, you know, you, you, yeah, I, that's how many that you actually get results on, right? So the 25 to 30 percent or whatever the, the hit rate is has to be covered inside that 300. So, so you end up having to have a pretty big list every month to make that, you know, fall below a dollar. Yeah, and he's not saying you pay the 300. He's saying these companies have a $300 minimum fee so that you would have, you and I would have to have enough files per month to even come close to that. So this is the benefit of the bulk buy concept that he came up with. 
Um, Nolan has a question. Can you email, I think it means, can you contact the customer directly from the tool? I don't have that yet. We are thinking of doing something like that. Um, we have, right now we have a link um, that, that goes directly to the seller central um, record for this transaction. And of course from there you can do it instantly. But we are looking at doing that. We just have to kind of figure out where would we want that email to come from and all of that. So, so there are some things we, we have to solve before we put that there. Uh, George but says, uh, yeah. sorry, Philip, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, it's very simple to do it from a transaction record. You can just click on the order number. The order number will open up the order inside of Seller Central. And you click on their name and you send the email. So you can do it fast. Yeah, you just have to be logged into Seller Central, and then he's right. Once you click on that link, it'll kind of auto open the right section for you. Um, George says, uh, so I guess he'll be adding stuff to it as time goes by. We are adding some stuff. Um, so we are we are working right now on adding overseas accounts. So if you're selling in UK or Germany or Japan, um, we want to be able to integrate that in there as well. Um, Right now we have it so you can have um, you can have two seller accounts. Um, if you have that, you can integrate those both into in, in, into your subscription there, and it'll show both inside that whole interface. Um, and that's kind of the first step to being able to add you know um, UK, Germany, Japan, and and the best of those markets. Oh, cool. Um, so you have your biggest fan here, Carl, because he's also from a Scandinavia. Uh, he says, Philip is an amazing guy. This tool is totally amazing. This will develop my business for sure. Thank you. And he, he's calling you a real Viking. Well, that's that's cool. Yeah, I am Danish, and uh, we are proud of our Viking heritage, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, people didn't realize it was just 30 bucks a month, so they're stoked. <laughs> yeah, it's just 30 bucks a month. You will pay extra for the email pen, but that's an optional service. If you don't need it, then just wait till you can afford it. Um, okay. Uh, if you have other questions, uh, Philip, is it okay if they contact you through your website? Absolutely. Um, All right. Uh, Philip, we sorry, go ahead. Questions. Yeah, we'll answer fast. We love questions. Uh, well, that makes one of us. <laughs> All right, Philip. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. And, uh, and I wish you the best with that tool. It's awesome. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Okay. Let's keep uh, plugging away here. Okay. There we go. All right. Believe it or not, guys, we have one more segment here. Uh, this is like the gift that keeps on giving, right? <laughs> let's let's go through this. Um, we can go through this relatively quickly because these are mainly templates I'm going to be showing you under the topic of what I call the hijacker defense system. Don't you love that picture? You know, that's how you picture these damn hijackers, right? <laughs> okay, so this is hands down probably the most requested topic or kind of questions that I get when I'm doing my live webinar Q and A's. It's, it's how to deal with a hijacker. So this is the first time that I've shared our system with you. Uh, I'm sure you've seen kind of similar things, but from my experience, you guys like to see exactly precisely the stuff that we're sending out. So I've decided to pull back the curtain and just show you. So these are the three scenarios that I've run into. I mean, I'm sure there's more weird freak exceptions, but most of them fit into these three scenarios. Okay. Number one, Somebody tries to take over the, the, the buy box with a, you know, with a fake or counterfeit lower price version of your product, okay? So like in other words, they attach themselves to your listing. Um, yours is a branded egg timer and they are trying to win the buy box with let's say a, a generic inferior version of the egg timer uh, that's different than yours. Okay. The second scenario is somebody attempts to list a used version of your product or they claim that it's used. So they're basically uh, coming in at a lower price. And the third scenario uh, is somebody is adding a related but different product as a parent child to your listing. Okay. So I'm going to go through exactly how we treat each of these um, you know, scenarios. So let's just start with the most, most basic, um, how to contact the seller. Okay. Because 
I'm going to give you our three step sequence, uh, three step sequence that we send out, but you have to know how to contact the buyer. Now, this is example only. Uh, these screenshots are not hijackers at all, but let's pretend this is your egg timer listing. You click on a blue link that says blah, 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 new. Okay. And then there's another blue link that says X percent positive. This is the seller feedback link. So click on that and it'll take you to a, uh, the, the seller feedback kind of summary page. And underneath the recent feedbacks, you'll see this thing that says further information. That's how you contact the seller. You just click on that link. Okay. So here's uh, what we do. We send them a three-step cease and desist um, sequence. Okay. Now, I always like to give credit where credit is due. And I honestly cannot remember how this sequence evolved. It was probably a combination of something that somebody posted on a forum at some point. Then I saw one that was on A's on seller tools. I kind of blended them together. Um, you know, had, uh, had an attorney kind of glance at it and kind of tighten up some of the language. So that's how this evolved. Um, for us, when we send out this three-step sequence, it works about 90% of the time. Okay. And it's usually all we need to do to get, to kick people off our listings. And, and the reason it works is this, as you'll see, it's very important that we give people a way to save face. We give them a convenient out. So I don't want to like walk up to somebody who's just shoplifted and corner them because when you, when you corner a shoplifter, that's when the knife comes out. That's when the violence happens. The, the, the smart, more experienced police officer will literally not corner the shoplifter. They will give them an exit because they would rather have that person drop the item and run than erupt into violence. So basically we want to do the equivalent with these cease and desist. We want to basically give them a convenient way that they can gracefully exit and just leave the listing. Okay. So the first email does provide that. And then we get increasingly more aggressive if they don't comply. Now I'm not an attorney. I do not give legal advice and I'm showing you the sequence for educational purposes only. So have your own attorney review it and, or use it your own risk. All right. So it's a three-step sequence. Uh, day one, they get email one. Day two, they get they get email number two. Day three, they get email number three. You, you obviously don't have to send out step two and three if they remove the listing. All right. And if they still have not taken down the listing, I go ahead and buy out all their product, verify that it's that it's counterfeit, and then we contact either seller performance or seller central. All right. Let's just take a look at email number one. Now, I don't want to bore the daylight side of you guys because we've been going now uh, two hours and 10 minutes, but I just want to uh, read the first one because um, the others are very similar. So whatever the hijack company name, let's say it, it's ABC Egg Timer, it would say ABC Egg Timer representative. It's come to our attention that your company, ABC Egg Timer, is using the blah, blah, blah brand name and trademarks to divert traffic to your listing on Amazon Marketplace in violation of multiple international and national uh, laws as well as civil laws, blah, 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 blah. Here's the link to your listing. And, and, and we want to link to, uh, you know, to their listing that they've hijacked. We're the exclusive distributors and owners of the brand, blah, blah, blah. We've never granted permission to your company to sell a brand, nor have we sold you inventory for resale. For your reference, here's our brand registered Amazon listing. And this is where you link to your listing. This will serve as legal, legal notice to cease and desist all further actions, blah, 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 blah. If you do not remove your listing within 24 hours, we will report you to Amazon for violating their policies. After you have removed your listing, please contact us so we can verify you've done so. Now, here is here's the face-saving verbiage. I realize you may have created this listing without realizing you were in violation of our brand registry. However, we need you to remove your listing for blah, blah, blah immediately. Thank you in anticipation of your prompt action. Sincerely, your name and sign up founder of the brand. Okay. Now, the second email is pretty much verbatim, uh, but we add this second notice to remove your listing. It's been 24 hours since we asked you to remove your Amazon listing. 
However, our records show you've not complied. This is the second notice to cease and desist and remove your listing immediately. And then pretty much the rest is the same. But we're adding um, uh, increased verbiage. If you don't, don't remove your listing immediately, we'll report you to Amazon. And here's the final one. This is short and sweet and scary by design. It says, final warning to remove illegal listing. My company has initiated formal proceedings with Amazon to have blah, 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 permanently removed from Amazon as an illegal seller of brand registered products. This is your final warning to remove illegal listing found here immediately. Please contact me when you have when you have removed this listing and we will cancel our formal request to have blah, blah, blah removed from Amazon for violations. Okay. Now, um, if they do not comply, we buy them out. Now, this actually doesn't cost us anything because once we verify it's counterfeit, we can, we can get a refund for all the units we purchased and we can ship it back to Amazon with uh, each individual product wrapped with a sheet of paper that says counterfeit item, do not put back into FBA inventory. And this is actually an idea that, that my partner did um, uh, several months ago when we had a counterfeiter. So if someone's stolen your buybacks, it's, you know, we'll give them three days to leave, but it's imperative that you buy out the inventory. In fact, my partner, um, if it was up to him, I don't let him, but he would, uh, he would want the buyout to happen immediately. <laughs> Right. And then send him the, the a cease and desist. And he has a point because if you have three days of a good selling product and somebody else has kind of stolen your buy box, those are sales that you aren't getting. So anyway, this is just how I do it. I like to give them a chance to remove the listing. Typically, uh, they get out of my listing within one day, um, maximum within two days. Usually if they're not gone by the third day, then I probably will uh, almost guaranteed have to buy out their inventory. Okay. Get it shipped to you, verify it's counterfeit, and then we're going to report them to Amazon support. And again, once you verify it's counterfeit, you can, you can request a refund from Amazon and you just tell them that it's counterfeit. Okay. So this is what the email that you send in when you have a counterfeit situation. Now, okay. I'm not going to sit here and read it to you, but this is exactly what we use. Now, this is pretty interesting. We call this the add to cart trick. And this is something that my partner came up with, as far as I know, unless he read it on a forum. Sometimes a customer uh, bought one, two, or three of our items for a dollar when we had a giveaway. And they're actually not counterfeit. But you kind of want them off your buy box. So first of all, check how much stock they really have. It might not be that big of a deal. And you can easily do that by using the add to cart trick. So you just go ahead, you click add to cart, and then you change the quantity to like two. And it says, oh, not available. Well, you, then you know they just have one available. But if you see they have three available, and then you try 10, and you try 20, then you know it's probably a counterfeiter, okay? So honestly, though, it, if they have like one for sale, uh, if they don't vacate my listing from my cease and desist email, I probably just leave them, or I'll just buy it myself if it's just sort of annoying me. Uh, I found in the real world, that people tend not to buy used items from Amazon. That, that's more the domain of eBay, not Amazon. Now, um, you know, in a real world, you're gonna be going back and forth in most cases a few times with Seller Central. So we found that there are certain trigger words that spurs Seller Central into action. The phrase counterfeit. Anything having to do with customer, a bad customer experience, because Amazon, rightfully so, is obsessed by the customer. So blah, blah, blah is causing a bad customer experience, or it's confusing uh, you know, the customer since the item isn't what they ordered, causing market confusion. And then along with the phrase a counterfeit, you want to use things like trademarked or brand registered. By the way, don't use trademarked if you're not you know, if you don't have a trademark, just say, you know, we're the brand register, we're the owner of the company, they're, they're in violation of our brand and our pending trademark or whatever the case may be. Okay. Now, um, this is also something that we encountered, the parent-child hijack. So this is where like, uh, you'll have, let's say a yoga mat, that's your product. And all of a sudden, two children are showing up within your listing for uh, a yellow yoga towel and a red yoga towel. And you're thinking, wait, yoga towel? I'm not selling yoga towels, and this is a yoga mat. 
Um, don't panic. This is the easiest to get tossed out of your listing because it's in such blatant violation of Amazon terms of service. It's not a true child situation. Very, uh, at least we found it's just readily apparent to the Amazon seller central customer support. Um, so the action is just send our parent child hijacker email to seller central, mark the request as urgent and uh, they'll usually take care of it right away. Okay. And again, I'm not going to sit here and read this to you, but you will have this in your swipe file that you can refer to. Okay. So quick bonus here, then we're going to wrap up because at this point in the webinar, I am heading uh, very quickly towards being completely mentally fried. <laughs> I call this the copyright defense system. <laughs> How's that for a title? But this is pretty cool. So some of you have had the frustrating experience where, you know, you spend money to get really nice Amazon images made. And then some of them are appearing on your competitors listings. And you're like, wait a minute, this is bull crap. And you know that Amazon won't allow us to watermark our images technically. So what do you do? Well, the only way to combat that is, is, is you have to copyright the title and the listing elements as well as the images. But that takes time and money, right? So here's my free solution. It's not as good, of course, as, as doing an you know, official copyright uh, for your sales copy and your images, but it is good enough to scare people off. And it's, it's a site that I'm actually surprised a lot more of you aren't using this. It's called copyrighted.com. It's free. And basically, uh, this is a screenshot of what it looks like on the bottom of your e-commerce site. And this can just be an ugly you know, WordPress page. All you need is some sort of web page, not Amazon, but your own web page, where you copy and paste the title, you copy and paste the bullets, you copy and paste the, the product description, and then you paste all of the Amazon images somewhere on one web page. At the bottom, then you register that web page with the legal timestamp, okay? And then you post that little copyrighted.com symbol, okay? Now, there is something in the law called, called the, the, uh, uh, the law of first use, okay? So even if you're not officially haven't filed, let, let's say, copyright, if you have proof of first, uh, of first use and that somebody stole it, uh, that is that comes with a set of very strong legal rights. Okay, so this is just one extra layer of the onion. It's a good uh, first line of defense, and often scares off those who try to steal your copy, your title, or your images. And literally, if somebody were to click on that little symbol on the bottom of your web page, they'll be taken to a page that looks like this. It shows the date that you registered that copy and those images. It gives you a copyright number. It shows what the title is and it actually links to your web page. Okay. So um, I'll take uh, about five minutes of questions. Don't forget, uh, we will have time to take uh, tons and tons of questions on next week's uh, live Q&A webinar. Uh, so I'll probably just take about five minutes or so of questions now if you have them. Uh, Callie said there is an incident that one of the competition said we're in violation, which is untrue. How do we handle that? Yeah, I mean, that that can happen. You would just contact uh, Seller Central and you would just explain that you weren't in violation and this is your brand, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so uh, Jennifer, yeah, yeah, we already uh, covered how to handle that. If somebody... I uh, got some of your products you know, from a giveaway, then you would just buy them out, have them shipped to your house. You would repackage up and send them right back into FBA inventory if it's, it, you know, if it's a lot of units. Steve says, why can't you just post a trademark pick on each page of your website? The trademark pick. Well, uh, this isn't a trademark. This is a copyright. There, there, there's a major, you know, legal difference, and and you can, but you would, you just have to register each page that you want copywritten. It, there, there isn't one bulk way to do it across all your listings that would be on your e-commerce site. Um, how do I know if anybody's hijacking my product or or buy box? Um, uh, James Jones, are you still on the line? 
James Jones, you there, buddy? Okay. Uh, maybe if somebody could type in, I, I don't know if James Jones tools uh, will, will notify you or not. There is a, there's another tool that, uh, that we also use. It's called Azon Seller Tools. This is different than his tool. Let me just... Uh, it is this one here. Um, and this is also cheap. Uh, we get a notice when you, when you put your ASIN with this particular tool, we get an automated, uh, an automated email every time, uh, a listing's hijacked. Whenever somebody leaves seller feedback, whenever somebody leaves a product review, that way we can, uh, you know, very quickly, uh, you know, respond or we can send out the cease and desist, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, James Jones, uh, if, if you are still there, let me know if your tool does that or not. I, I can't remember if it does. Uh, thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. Um, so someone asked, can you include the phrase registered with copyrighted.com on your Amazon listing? You cannot reference any other website within your Amazon listing, uh, they will make you remove that. If not, ban your listing. So, you, you know, you don't need to do that. You just want to register it uh, on your own web page. Uh, Stacy says, with the copyright, do you have to update it if you change your bullet points on Amazon? Yeah, I do. Uh, so, so Jennifer has a question about, uh, the, uh, uh, essentially how to wire the pieces together. Uh, if you get the email append service, how do you get them to double opt in? How do you email them? Again, if, if the interest is there and you guys can go ahead and type it in, I'll have Philip Je uh, uh, Jepson walk us through what that would look like. You know, what do you do with the email, with the real emails once you get them? Uh, yeah, Carl, um, I don't use, um, any of the copyrighted.com stuff on my actual Amazon listing. Uh, you know, you, you, um, it's, it's, it's only appropriate for your own web page. And then of course, so if, if, if somebody steals your image, your copy, um, you know, you still would then contact that seller and you would read them the right act say that they're in violation of a copyright, blah, blah, blah. You can see here it's timestamped and you must cease and desist the use of that image immediately, blah, 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 blah. Same deal. Uh, so uh, Sebastian says, I have a hijacker shipping to China. I have a hijacker shipping to China. And he has 50 pieces to ship. Should we, uh, shipping from China with, with the 50 pieces, should we buy all of them could be expensive and we're not based in the U S well, you know, that's what we would do if they're not, you know, if, if they're hijacked, um, you know, counterfeit items, you absolutely should buy those 50 pieces, uh, have them shipped to you. Ideally, maybe you can contact FBA inspection and see if they'll take delivery since you're outside the U S maybe that's a good solution for you. Have them verify that it's counterfeit, and then you just get a refund because you just ship them back in, right? But um, and then and then you contact seller uh, performance and get that seller banned. Amazon does not want people selling counterfeit items on their platform. They take that very seriously. Uh, so a Sahan, I, I just gave a possible solution. Those of you that are outside the U.S., uh, you might be able to arrange something with with Jim at FBA inspection. Uh, Steve says that ASM has a hijack tool. Uh, cool. I've never, never even looked at it. Uh, so let's see. Yep. Mark says the same thing. Watchdog tool. Yes, I have heard of that action. So the watchdog tool does, uh, uh, yeah. The hijack smacker is the name of the tool at Azon seller tools. Uh, Philip, we have two, three, four. <laughs> we have lots of people that would like a follow-up seminar with you of what to do with those real emails, how to kind of wire those pieces, um, 
you get together. So why don't we chat here in the next week or two and, and we'll talk about possibly doing that. Uh, okay. So, oh, one question just snuck in here. Let's see. Let me do it. Beverly has a good, good tactic here. Uh, I've not used this, but I think it's a good tactic. Uh, she wrote, we had 130 units hijacked, and what we did was lower the price to cost, so the hijacker lost most of her profit. <laughs> cool. All right, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Um, as much as I try to keep these within 90 minutes, I just am, am incapable. <laughs> uh, so hopefully you guys don't mind uh, the level of content here. Um, <laughs> I'd rather you know, overwhelm you than underwhelm you. But uh, thanks for hanging on here. I, I always appreciate your enthusiastic support for what we're doing here with the Fast Track Coaching. Thanks, Philip. Thanks, James. Really appreciate your time. Uh, check out their tools. Highly recommend both. And uh, you're going to be getting an email here in a couple days uh, with the date and time for our live webinar Q&A. So until then, I want to wish you much success in your Amazon business. See ya.